Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. Oh, we did it. Uh, we Rebel have Moon. We have arrived wow. at the Rebel there's Moon. New, there's new Magnum Opus? Uh, yes. Question mark? Yes. There's uh, no question. It's Magnum something. The, the, new, the new greatest film ever made. I'm waiting for this In... for forever, I'd say. Yeah, no, the it's new... pretty exciting. I mean, this is, this is like the culmination of a decades-long journey. Yeah, I would argue the, the Rebel Moon. When we heard of Zack Snyder, we were like, when do we get to have something like a Rebel Moon? Like a like a, yeah, a an original we, oof, When do beautiful... we get his mature his mature take on Star Wars, you know, like science fiction? Oh dude, I'm so tired know? of child wars. That's what we call it because it's so childish and Yeah, immature. you know, it's D Disney Star Wars is bad. This is Netflix, which means something really significant. Yeah, that means that it's, it's not, good, I it's think. Netflix, um, yes. Well, I mean, Netflix and Snyder put together. When has that ever failed? I mean, yeah, like Army of the Dead was... Oh, gorgeous film. May, may I say another I mean, masterpiece? Maybe, it's true. It definitely yeah, like, didn't hurt it, our it, eyes watching it. It, it, was re it really didn't hurt our eyes. I was, I was going to say, I don't know that I've watched a film that didn't hurt my eyes as much as... as uh, but if Army it did, Dead. that would only be evidence of the glory. And the, uh, and the, the sequel, uh, the, the Army of Thieves that everybody talked about... Isn't that a prequel? Oh, yeah, the... the <laughs> That's right, prequel. It came out later that year, and everybody was talking about it. Everyone talked been, about it. Everyone everybody's reviewed been it. Everybody's talking about like, oh man, I'm so excited for the Army of the Dead universe. That's going to be an anime, and I think a comic book, and like more movies. Everybody's been talking so about it. So the big it. thing everyone talked about was the Rebel Moon and Army of the Dead are in the same universe. Which oh really? Holy really? shit! I think mean, that's probably the oh biggest news for media of the year. I, I think. Do you remember? Do you remember like in Super the Super Smash Brothers trailer where like the villager got the letter and it had yes. the Smash Brothers logo on it? it was... And how hyped that was? Not even comparable to I was about to say same world, got. but scale wise, that's tiny. So you're telling me that that uh that we could see well no, I guess Dave Batista's character got blown up. Well, maybe uh, but, maybe he's not the, blown up the, yet the in the Rebel Moon world. Maybe oh yeah, around. maybe it's a prequel. We'll see him and it's like, man, hi there. Rebel Moon characters. I sure hope I don't get blown up I at think, some point in yeah, the future. Yeah, I, I think that's what the end of Rebel Moon's going to be. We're setting up Earth. It was all going to set oh, up Earth. Okay, so like the post credit scene will be Dave Batista going, I'm putting together a team to go to Las Vegas, and I need you in it, Rebel Moon. Yeah, but the and end of Rebel Moon 2 will be God making okay. Earth. Like, that's going to be the after credits. Oh, it's going to be God himself, fa like, creating the universe, mm -hmm, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the most like meaningless <laughs> oh, no. shared universe announcement ever. What are you um, talking about? It's it's profoundly meaningful. <laughs> oh, it changed course, lives. Yes, it's, what it's, is it there to gain lives. from this, Rex? For instance, here I am thinking that the um well one of them that was kind of kind of interesting, I suppose, is um the fact that Blade Runner and Alien share the same universe. Uh or that like little Easter egg when I think it was Prometheus came out, there was like a note or something that referenced Tyrell or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, look. And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting because they're both two sci fi properties that take place in the future, even though 2019 is when the first Blade Runner takes place. Um, uh, it's in the future in our hearts. Okay. It's in the future. Yeah. It's, it's essentially, it's in the future. You have replicants, right? So you have like cyborg androids and, you know, it's like, okay, you a little bit of crossover there with, you know, the bishop and all that. Okay. That's like something. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a thing I could sort of like think and ponder on. And this is like, oh, Army of the Dead and Rebel Moon are in the same. It's like, I, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but they're on different ends of the universe. It doesn't matter. That's, that's just a meaningless thing that you just. Probably came up with after the fact and then announced it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, bear in mind that that's going to be more meaningful in the director's cut of uh, Rebel Moon yes. Part 1, A Child of Fire. If you watch the R-rated director's cut, which is really the true version of the film, hence why they released this one. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's why <laughs> they this released point in time, this one. That's why they released this one. There'll be connections, there'll be more meaningful connections uh to to uh army of the dead and rebel moon and uh seven samurai as well actually takes place in the same universe as rebel moon 
And uh, I, I think I'm that Ahsoka will show up because they travel. She's going to travel to oh, a new galaxy. That's so cool. That's, true. That's she's in the, the galaxy, galaxy, and that where, might be the yeah, Rebel Moon Galaxy. The Rebel Moon Galaxy is going to be. This yeah, one. that's that's interesting. And wouldn't that be mm -hmm. so interesting if main character in this in in Rebel Moon Part One, A Child of Fire, in Rebel Moon Part Two, Scargiver? If uh, she met Ahsoka, is that Ahsoka. what it's called? Scargiver, yes, hell yeah! Scargiver. Oh no! Yeah. I so wonder are you if, saying uh, that. You're, you're saying I that want, there is an I actual chance? I have a, a director's cut for the second one called Scar Giver, or, or Justice's Scar edition. Just, Justice's Scar? Like the, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's right. The Justice's Scar, just like Man of, uh, not Man of Steel. The, 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 the final the film League? in the Man of Steel Justice League trilogy, Justice League, Justice's Grey edition. The oh, true beautiful. version, because when it was being made for theaters, it was definitely designed to be four by three rather than sixteen by nine or yes. the IMAX ratio. That's I've just got the a truth. Question. Because this shares a universe with all those things, and because it took a lot of inspiration from Star Wars, are you saying that we might get a crossover where Ahsoka and Korra meet up and team up to create the dynamic duo of the two most bland boring um paint by numbers female protagonists that we could ever possibly get i thought you were talking fight about side uh, by side. The Korra from the legend of Korra. the i didn't realize rebel moon took place in the avatar the last rebel Avenue. moon does take place in the she avatar is indeed cinematic universe Korra. oh well that so, makes sense because netflix is doing a live action adaptation of avatar the last Airbender. so many cool. shared oh, universes boy. i can't hold all these yeah. shared universes are there any know, universes that aren't over. shared? Not under um, the visionary direction of Zack Snyder. Of which we are pretty big either. fans. We've seen like I his whole Zack library Snyder. at this point. I think Almost. I've seen so every clever. film he's made. Oh uh, wait, I haven't seen Dawn of the Dead, the one that I hear. Have we seen Legends of Gahul? I haven't seen no, Gahul, I haven't seen that one. Right? Okay, so I've seen the majority of his filmography. Elijah Wood, he's a Lord of the Rings connection. Elijah Wood was the the voice of the protagonist mm, in mm. Guardians of Kahul. Interesting. Okay. Quest so for the Black Pearl or whatever. Rebel Moon is uh, part of the Lord of the Rings universe. Yes, it's Upper Earth. Yeah. If I'm scrolling through the Cimmerillion, it will mention Rebel Moon. Oh, um, yes. Easily. If you scroll through the Cimmerillion, it will talk about Korra and the um, the Astro Militaris. And, and the moon their, that was rebelling. Yeah, and the see. Rebel Moon, yeah. There right. was a Loyal Moon and a Rebel Moon. Well, I imagine there's got to be more than one loyal moon and, and more than one rebel moon. But I, I guess, guess somebody's got to be paying for all these spaceships. It's the first moon that rebelled. I feel like it would be called rebel moons if there was more than one. I, I don't think Zach would lie to us like this. Mm. He, would, he would let us know. Ooh, maybe maybe that's the sequel, Rebel Moons. Well, remember, the sequel after the... Because I think the plan is that there's going to be uh, like a trilogy. But remember, part one and part two is not like two out of three. That's That's like one. So it'd be a trilogy of sequels, I think. Um, so that there'd be like a, a part... trilogy of sequels. So like, yeah. So I imagine it'd be Rebel Moon two part one, whatever it's called. Maybe Scar Taker, 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 Taketh them back. Ooh, take us Scar back Taker, stars. that's cool. Ooh, then, I will take then, the Scar that and you then gave. Part two, I don't know, like an an elderly man of water. Um, you know, elder you scars, because it's like it rhymes. Yeah. Oh, oh, the elder scars, Skyrim, Skyrim. The, right. the elder scars uh -huh. are some like ancient being. The elder scars like know yeah. all yeah. of all and, of what and, happens. They're ancient scars. They're like a oh, scar be so with awesome and cool. And, and legs in the face. But if he and doesn't like, do I that, if he doesn't scar. end up doing it, it wasn't cool. But if he does do it, that'd be so cool. Uh, or God of Scar mm. or Scar of War. I'm not even sure which is even cooler. Uh, I guess it would probably be God of Scar, right? God this Scar. The, the, he, he gives the scars and he's he's in charge of them. They're like under his domain. Mm. Like it's like for every scar you have, the more power you have. And the Elder Scars yeah, like so, have really so big old scars. The, yeah, the and God then the Emperor just runs around cutting people because it gives him power. Yeah, the more yeah. Scars there is one. Well. There's one scar to rule them all. And everyone's trying to get the scar to rule them all. Oh, he could have provided oh, a whole bunch of scars to different races, but then they didn't right. realize there was one scar made in secret. And so, when instead of taking but another it to scar Mount was Doom, given, he has to take it to the hospital so the doctor can like fix it up, you know, put some stitches yeah. in it. Mm. That's right. You look very. Maybe cool. they could make a prequel series about how the scars were made. 
Ooh. Um, yeah. yeah that, what, the scars of power? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they could call it Scab. <laughs> <laughs> scab. Yeah. Pretty they brilliant. call it Scab. And Zack Snyder's 14, so he picks it all the time <laughs> so it doesn't heal properly. So it goes on and on and on. Is that you summarizing Zack Snyder's career? The scab no, that never no, gets no, healed because he keeps picking at it. No, no, I'm not. I would never <laughs> say that about the visionary director, auteur of our time, Zack Snyder. The creator of Rebel Moon, Scar No, wait, Moon, that's Child right. of Fire, part one. Part one, Child that's of Fire. Right. It's The name the is so good. Child of Fire. It's not clunky in, at all. No, no. It's so epic, I would say. And it, it really Child commands a sense of mystery and also clarity. I so, like it yeah. when the name of your movie references a character in the movie who is one of the most unmemorable, boring, and bland characters you could have possibly created. And then you call her the Child of Fire. And then... No I think it's funny it. that you've described her that way when she's got the most going on. As in... Out of all the characters? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, I like, because so. I agree with you. maybe, like, four or five lines of dialogue. It's kind of incredible. I, I yeah, agree with no you about has... the assessment of her character, but the, at the same time, she's the one that I'd be able to tell you the most about. I think so, because they spent four or five scenes... <laughs> Awkwardly telling us all of the oh, backstory God. to her. <laughs> all right, is it time? Do we begin? <laughs> we right, yeah, yeah so guess... now it's the time where we talk about Rebel Moon, Rebel Part Moon. 1 of Child of Fire. Um, wow. Oh my God. So, can, can I say, let me tell you this. When I went to the EFAP Discord with my announcement that I had seen Rebel Moon, I typed out, I think my message was, I saw Rebel Moon. And it wasn't as good as Aquaman 2. <laughs> there you go, everyone. If you need to question its quality. I don't know how anyone can deny that. I, well, I don't, like, it's like a joke thing because it's a really bad movie, but it's also true. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as good as Aquaman 2. It also wasn't as fun to watch as Aquaman 2. Uh, no, it's miserable. It's a pretty it miserable. Was this is not like misery. the kind of bad movie that you can have fun with, like Aquaman or... I haven't seen Aquaman yeah. 2 yet. I'm guessing like Aquaman that 2 one was too. terrible, but there were some things like, oh, okay, oh, it's John Rhys Davies crab. Ha ha ha, that's fun. Oh, look, Orm said a thing that I kind of like. Um, oh, isn't it crazy that the doctor is here and yeah, he's but doing I mean, shenanigans? Isn't that just, that's evidence of how, because Aquaman, it's a clown movie. It's not, you know, it's not mature. It's not exploring interesting themes like Rebel Moon does. Yeah, actually, that's a good comparison because you'd be like, oh, well, so is Rebel Moon a, a clown movie? Like, a dead clown. That's probably how you'd look at it. It's like, oh, he's not moving. Well, it's Can like I... if Crossy was dead, lying in a ditch. Yeah, because, like, I think a clown movie is supposed to at least imply a bit of, like, <laughs> look at the clown. Look at him jumping up and down, yeah, exactly. juggling. But Where if it's a dead nothing, clown... A, he's a like... dead clown is just sad. Yeah, and he like smells. Can I, um, can I draw an odd comparison? But it'll make sense, okay. and maybe you'll maybe you'll sort of see the connection um, after I make it. I'm going to make a connection between Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire, Part One, and Starfield. Okay. Okay. All right. So both of them science fiction new IPs that came out this year. Both of them have all of this funding, enough funding to basically tell and create a world that is anything that the creators want it to be. It is a dream project. Let us take Starfield, right? Bethesda money, Bethesda backing, whole development team, art team, programming and coding team, allegedly. Um, and it, it's a, a new IP. You could do anything you want. You could make a new science fiction world, anything you want. And they made Starfield right? Shit. And then you have Zack Snyder, who somehow, against all odds, after failure after failure after failure, still gets given... I think, that it was, I think for both parts, it was $166 million. <laughs> So over $80 million dollars to make a science fiction movie. That could be basically... It's anything you want, because you're the visionary director, our auteur of our age, Zack Snyder. I'm going to call it... I know we're only... 23 years into the 21st century, but I'm calling it auteur of the century, Zack Snyder. And you have all this money, you can do anything you want. And all you do is this. This is what you make of it. 
from what I've heard. I understand the comparison. He, um, his movies, the ones that we're not a fan of, a lot of people claim All we don't them. understand them. Okay. But I wonder how much we don't understand about Rebel Moon. Uh, maybe I'm that sure will they'll tell us. With time. Yeah, you know. If, if you're mean, in I... the comment section, tell us what we did not understand about Rebel Moon, because I need to know. I need to understand why this man keeps being given just millions and millions of dollars to make projects like that are, that are terrible. I need to know. Remember, I need to know um, the secret. I think it was the trailer for Rogue One where she says, you're a rebellion, I rebel, or something like that. Mm. Why didn't she say, I, I rebel, Moon? What, I, well, she I mean, that's the reason why Rogue One didn't make a more billion dollars, okay? Mm. Um, it, obviously, they're set in the same universe. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. This is a Star War, so... Well, I believe uh, yeah. Rebel Moon began as him trying to pitch a Star Wars movie to, uh... <laughs> To um to shortly after really <laughs> is that yeah, actually true? Are you memeing? I, uh, well, look, right. I'm a Wikipedia Andy, and I saw okay. on Wikipedia that it was saying that um that shortly after Disney had acquired Lucasfilm, this was kind of the pitch of like, oh, I want to make like more of a mature Star Wars, and then Ugh. over the last decade, it's turned into Rebel Moon, but that it began so as a, a Star that Wars movie. A pitch. Lot. It that really, explains um, why this is the really worst Star Wars, uh, A New Hope redo since The Force Awakens. Oh, I've seen so many people say, yeah, but it's still better than, like, Disney Star Wars. I don't, I don't um, know why we would be saying things I like that. Um, I don't do know, I. Yeah, I don't even know if that's, like, a foregone conclusion, honestly. Yeah, I legit um, don't know if I agree with that. I think well, that... Also, Rise of Skywalker is way funnier than Rebel Moon. Yes, yeah. I would absolutely watch The Rise of Skywalker again over Rebel Moon. And, and um, there are look, some you know things what? that are good the last in the Jedi trilogy. has a lot of nice shots, which is something that I can't say for Rebel Moon compared to... Compared to a lot of Snyder's older work, honestly. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. Well, well um, Army of the Dead and, uh, and Rebel Moon are like his worst-looking films, I would say. Easily. I don't know what it is. Easily. Like, they, they, and, and, of course, the interesting little factoid is that um, he's the cinematographer on Army of the Dead and Rebel Moon, whereas mm. he had cinematographers for his other films. Is that something um, you can get a degree in? Is that, uh, a, like, cinematography? That a thing that uh like a like photography or something well, like that can the you thing is, is that for that you look at basically any film ever made there is a cinematographer and they're usually not the director there's someone else yeah. there's someone a dedicated cinematographer um which makes sense um, yeah yeah it does make sense um their focus is entirely on when and where to get those shots in and it's just so funny what, to know that what technology to use what cameras yeah, how and, to set everything up he, his, the appreciation for Snyder's eye, it's just curious that all of it comes from movies that he's not the cinematographer the on. Is, the thing is, I'm happy to give him that because he's the director. If he's, if if we assume that you are ultimately responsible for everything that's creative about your project, you're responsible for getting the right people to mm -hmm. realize your vision with clarity. But I do find it really bizarre and interesting that the films of his that really don't look nice at all are the ones that he was a cinematographer for and because this film has a lot of similar problems yeah, I think... to uh, army of the dead in terms of really blurry shots murky environments like lack of clarity oh and the lens that he's chosen it's that goompy lens but i was going to say had he not been the cin cinematographer on this and army of the dead and they both looked amazing like, still shitty scripts or whatever, but they both um, looked amazing, yeah, then at least we'd still... I, th I think I would happily maintain that he's still got a good eye, but knowing that he had full control over how those two looked, and that's what they look like, it's like, hmm, really challenging yeah, my perspective on him. Yeah, that during the editing process, or, you know, during review of, like, any of the footage that they captured on any given day, that he looked at it and went, yeah, this is good. Um, this is really good. This is yep, what I want. it's done. It's finished. There's nothing more to add or to take away. This is a final product. Send yeah. it to Netflix. And then they were like, do people like this? Is this what people yeah, like? Netflix, okay, sure. And then, well, no, they were probably just like, oh, sweet. Wow, amazing, because it's Netflix and they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. so Netflix is similar to Zack Snyder in that I don't think Netflix knows what quality is. Uh, Netflix is really unreliable. It feels like Netflix's strategy for things is throwing dots while yeah. blindfolded, and sometimes they land. 
and plenty of times they don't. Whereas, you know, maybe it's like better than you know, eight or nine years ago. Uh, well, it seems like eight or nine years ago, Netflix had a perception of being quality uh, because a lot of their original stuff was quality. Um, but now, if it was like the opposite is the case, Netflix kind of has like a trashy reputation. Um, yeah, as diamonds like, in the rough. Yeah, they're like a lot of the time. Exactly, incredibly inconsistent and unreliable. So there was, um, yeah, I I think that if if you just Zack Snyder is worse than randomness, I think. Oh yeah, which completely. is yeah, he's worse than randomness. Yeah. Uh, just it, if Netflix just gave just whatever projects to whatever people, like you'll get bangers, you know, and they do. And, and Ronald the Hobo will come up with that. something more sensical as a story than Zach. Will. Well, you know, uh, we made the comparison before. Dave Filoni is like he's like a he he's what an eleven or twelve year old would like create in terms of just sort of throwing all their toys together mm -hmm. of like yeah, and then there's a soak and my OC and she comes in and she's like whoosh whoosh and. And using their lightsabers, and that's so cool. And like Snyder's like an edgy teenager. That's where he's at. Well, yeah, like, he, he would he would he, take he one of the toys me. and be like, and then they die. Exactly. And what that represents is this really lame concept. Like that he thinks his ideas are incredibly profound when they're pretty rote and basic. Um wait, is that the right word? Rote? Yeah. What does that mean? Um <laughs> Maybe. That sounds like it could be a word. I I don't know how like to spell it. Like it. it's been done before, almost. Oh, oh, okay. It is. It is. Wait. It wrote R O T E, a mechanical or habitual repetition of something to be learned. I'm. I'm sorry. Oh. Now I'm like fixated on whether or not. I don't even know oh. if that's like. A, wow, I learn something new every day. But I don't know if that's the 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 point being is that the ideas aren't nearly as profound as he seems to think they are. Um, they're just not that interesting. Like, the, the driving ideas of, like, the idea, you know, like, oh, fuck, do we, do we want to retable the conversation about the DC Snyder films? Or do we just want to move nothing, on? Yeah, there's, there's nothing profound in them. Um, I mean, it just... No, but isn't it interesting, like, you see Paradise Lost and the painting with the, the demons coming from the sky, like the parademons, see? Because they, they've got wings too, and that's pretty... That's pretty clever. And isn't it interesting to think about Superman as a god entity rather than as, like, a man who who grew up on Earth and is a human being well, in see, this is, ways that matter? This I think is why that I thought the... you used the word wrote was that it's not, he's not learned anything. He's just been making films according to films being made. Like, there's nothing uh, in the heart of it, I guess, for lack of better um, words. I guess the problem is, like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's exactly, I don't, I don't view him as, like, cynical. Though Spoiled, I think I'm starting maybe? to move, I'm starting to move more towards cynical because I feel like we're getting further and further from the films that he's made that I kind of like. Yeah, like I like 300. I like that movie. There's something to it to um, like. Yeah, I don't blame anyone for liking that. Yeah, it's been a long time since 300. Well, it's easy to imagine why people like 300. Like I remember when it came out, and it was very, you know, it was cool and edgy, and it had that, you know, it had a lot of stylism. You know, stylism. And to it? I guess it'd be style something to that's it. worth noting is that you know that's based on a graphic novel watchman same deal uh meanwhile like sucker punch that's an original idea um and what obviously if... you know army of the dead and now rebel rebel moon is an original idea ostensibly um and I what don't do know, you think about the idea that, that what do you think about the idea that Zack snyder is spoiled uh, i think he's i think i think he is um overrated for sure um like he's sort of been given way too his... many chances and too much approval by too many people well, online so that, who see that's his work. an interesting one right michael bay is not viewed well critically but his films are successful um he's he's he is a consistently successful filmmaker though you know the last few films have struggled more but like you know like the rock armageddon bad boys transformers these are all really successful films they made a lot of money snyder's not as reliably bankable um sucker punch was a massive bomb man of steel you know like 200 million dollar budget 600 million you know like uh uh box office Eh, you know like yeah, I mean, you made like, your money this back. This is Superman. But, you know, this is our big thing. You know, this is a this is a really big deal. Yeah. Man of Steel, big Superman then, movie. Batman v Superman is a box office disappointment. The expectation was that film was going to make a billion dollars, and it didn't. Uh, and then, and then, you know, Justice League's obviously that's way more complicated because it's in some sense it's not his film. 
Um, but, you know, Army of the Dead, it was successful, I think, on Netflix by its metrics, but in terms of its cultural impact, non-existent, more or less. Was it successful on Netflix? Is, uh, uh... They considered it successful, I think, in terms of the amount of people who watched it when it came out, but again, cultural footprint, you know, like, yeah, like it? it's like a new thing comes out, everyone sees it, or everyone, there's like, I've got Netflix, well, of course, I'll, there was I'll lots look of, at um, it, you know? Meta to that beyond just whether or not someone wants to see a film, like it, yeah. the, the way they tried to sell it is, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. But I guess that's what I'm saying is, I don't, he's not, he's not like, he's not that profitable as a, as a director. It's funny, on, um, um, I was on FNT and they, uh, somebody said, he makes Michael Bay look good, and I was like, well, that's not even, Michael Bay is like, a Michael filmmaker. Bay has talent that exists in his, his filmmaking. Um, he can, he can get you an arc, a pretty himself. simple one. He can get you characters that bounce off each other because they don't also, have different values. I mean, rolling At least in his that. earlier films, his earlier films were very technically impressive as well in terms of the amount of core, uh, like the amount of coordination that would have gone special into effects. a lot of the shots that he did. Special effects, Transformers was really groundbreaking. Um, and, and of course, he made The Rock, which is just a downright good film. It's a good movie with things to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a big fan and of the it rock. Says them um, in a mature and emotional way. Um, and then there's more artistry in the shower shootout of the rock than the entirety of Rebel Moon or pro anything Zack Snyder's made. So it's, sometimes it is shocking to think that Michael Bay was behind the that that shower scene. It, it's very uh, yeah, it's wild, isn't it? It's like, is there anyone who ha hasn't seen it before? It's uh, give off the wrong perspective by saying the shower scene. It's a room that is the showers, but it has nothing to fucking do with showering. Let's just put it that way. It's a very effective yeah, it's, scene. It's, uh, yeah, it's well, a really amazing scene. The most iconic scene in The Rock, hyper influential, like Modern Warfare 2, the gulag was, uh, certain portions were heavily inspired by that. Um, it's like, it's an actually interesting scene in a film that's kind of interesting for what Michael Bay would typically be viewed as making. I mean, yeah. Michael Bay's made a lot of bad films, all right? <laughs> yeah, he really yes. has. But again, it's like, uh, yeah, that... I, I don't I don't I don't think I draw as much of a comparison between like him and Zack Snyder. I feel like they're different. They represent different things. Um, no, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't really see the connection at all. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael, Michael Bay, has Michael Bay good things that you wouldn't want to take away from him. I always thought his and reputation Zack was doesn't have anything worth taking away. I always thought his reputation was he'll entertain you, but it's not going to be much substance. Like that's Michael Bay. I think thing. the big thing in his favor is he knows what he's making, and he's not ashamed of that. He knows what kind of films he's making, whereas Snyder's more pretentious. Uh, I have never been convinced that Snyder understands storytelling. I just don't. Get, I don't think he does. I agree. I don't think so. Um, uh, I again, think, uh, to come back to that got... comment on him saying he's he's wrote is the it's like he understands. I don't know. Start, middle, end. Not even really. Just the events happen and then they progress and then you have some kind of action scene like an end and credits. Like I feel like he understands very mechanically film in some way shape or form not really the why in a sense like why it's pretty much anything to do with like if i said the heart and soul behind it it's like there's just none of that he makes sort of like the the daydream version of a movie where if you're just idly sitting mm. around imagining scenes in your head that's just the mm -hmm. film he makes they're not the scenes aren't connected and there's no real meaningful continuity between any of these disparate thoughts they're just it's just, it's just the daydream movie that he sort of makes, and it's empty and shallow, and it doesn't have any refinement or care put into it. It's just a discardable, random thing that pops into your head, and but he just goes with it, and that's the film that he makes. But I do agree. I don't think... It's, it's kind of like what we were talking about with, um, like, how does, how does Disney course correct with Marvel and Star Wars and stuff? And, and I'd mentioned that I don't think that they know what good is to aim for, and mm -hmm. so I feel like with Zack Snyder is it's like um it, it's like he can't hit the bullseye on anything because he he has like a like he he has a machine gun and he's firing off all of his shots, you know, all of his movies, bow 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 bow, and it's very loud and bombastic and he thinks it's so incredible and impactful and it's in slow motion, but he doesn't know where the bullseye is. He has no clue. He doesn't even know what he's aiming for. So how could he possibly make a good movie? If, if if he did it, it would be by complete coincidence. It'd be an accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's had too I many chances, so. and he has too much control. It's been an and that insane control that you amount have, of chances. I mean, yeah, I, I I will say that that is informing it. Like the idea that get getting like three plus chances, essentially, you could say like three point five chances with like DC stuff. 
that was already pretty absurd. And the notion that it's like, no, but there needs to be more. We need more than like three big like DC films with all of like the big DC characters that you could want in your story to get like three and a half chances really is is pretty like ridiculous. Um, and it feels unfair. Uh, and there's no progression. Those, those films couldn't... like don't really warrant. They weren't successful. Um, they they weren't really that successful commercially or critically. So you know. Meanwhile, a lot of other people get one chance. If they fuck up once, then they don't get any more chances. They don't get to Tony, make more sequels. They don't get to get, have their story. Don't get completed. given hundreds of yeah, millions Tony of dollars. Gilroy, he had three seasons taken from him, basically. He succeeded, and he got, and and they they gave him one more season <laughs> to to finish his story. Well, That's what people are wondering whether or not we'll even get that. I hope so. Mm -hmm. And, and and I guess it's interesting, right? Because you look at people like JJ, it's like, well, you know, JJ made money for a time, but now that he's not, like, he hasn't made anything for the last four years. That feels like his chicken's kind of coming home to roost. Yeah. Of like, you've delivered consistently bad films in a lot of big franchises for like the last decade. Uh, and now they're not making as much money anymore. So now you're out. But for whatever reason, Snyder keeps getting more chances. Um, well, at least with this though... one, I'm seeing the, the sentiment alter completely. Like, like everyone's oh, yeah, making fun but... of him. The interesting thing for Rebel Moon is that there's this is this is him, right? This is him with absolute creative control, new IP. Again, we are far again. past any of the era of like DC stuff going on. This is him in his purest form on again. screen. Um again, really. Uh yeah, Army and, the and, Dead. And now yeah. if it's bad, if it's bad, who are you gonna blame? Well that's the thing, we're not no particularly other... surprised because of Army of the Dead, but it's, uh, a lot of people are. And it's like, yeah, you, you didn't watch Army of the Dead, huh? And they're like, no. Yeah. You didn't watch it or you forgot about it because Army of the Dead was truly miserable. Yeah, it was horse um, shit. It was one of the worst but, movies I've ever seen. It's it weird. He just kind of got away with that one. That one just kind of slipped through as like, that doesn't affect anything in terms of perception of his talents as a filmmaker. Whereas now, yeah, this one's been too, it's been too prominently marketed as, yeah, Zack Snyder doing his own new original thing. Um, you know, this is all him, right? In the same way that Ahsoka was all Dave Filoni. Um, and yeah, it's not, it's not a very good movie. You want to talk about it? it <laughs> yeah, I would love to talk about Rebel Moon we Part should. 1, A Child of Ice and Fire. The, the, like no, the timestamp will be fire. like, at 32 minutes, they start talking about Rebel Moon. Yeah, look, all right, yep. Yeah. Um, so like any... Delay for so long. Any grand, epic sci-fi world, it needs an intro. It needs exposition to understand, which is something you get for free in a lot of movies. You're like, you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Every filmmaker. Star Wars opening crawl is essentially that. So, what do we learn about this world that would, would someone would describe as like, oh, this was integral to describe? It's funny because I'd always come back to Star Wars. What? A perfect opening crawl for getting you all the context you could possibly need that not necessarily couldn't have been garnered from watching the film itself, but that really helps you slip right in to a world that's completely alien. Uh, this this one, you it, it feels so much more like again the the teenager telling me things where I'm just like hey, wait hang on. So it, it starts by saying like we got Mother World, and Mother World. Is this like the will the the planet they came from, but also the faction? We're gonna the have Mother a world few. Is the Empire. Um, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a few returns to this idea of he's shitty at kind of picking out names. Yes, because uh, I think yeah, there's quite a yeah. few names in this that I would just be like, no, no, no. Let's think about it for longer than two seconds and well, pick out remember, something for your big movie. You know, because there's a mother world, and then like the Imperium is the army of the mother world. Another very creative name, Imperium. Yeah, uh, because and a, another thing is that uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be aping off a lot of other things. We're gonna be combining. Well, what did you say? Magnificent Seven, Star Wars, and Warhammer 40k? <laughs> Samurai and 7. Shitty... Yeah, Samurai uh, 7. Samurai 7, that's right, yeah. But yeah, there's, there's definitely, it feels like there's Warhammer as well, Star Wars. Um, Yeah, Cyberpunk even a little bit there a little in bit, a yeah. few instances. Well, so what's interesting is from what I know, Samurai 7 is derived from Seven Samurai, which is also where Star Wars draws inspiration from. But the, there will be, I think there's going to be someone out there that's like, oh, so when Rebel Moon does it, it's not okay, but when Star Wars does it, it is, and you'll be like, oh, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about oh, oh, we'll get the there. difference. You betcha. You betcha. 
So, Mother World, and for just the sake of understanding, that's the Empire. They consume their own planet. It's it's all, oh no, we got no resources. And so, then they conquered the galaxy. Which feels really weird as a statement. Like, you've, you've taken up all the resources on your planet, so off to the galaxy you go. It's just like, okay. And of course, a, a planet devoid of resources is well positioned to wage wars of conquest. Yeah, to launch a galactic invasion. Maybe they planned ahead. They knew uh, it. Was yeah, happen. I guess maybe. Yeah. Uh, and so it just doesn't. All it is is like there's a better way to try and deliver that information. But fine, we'll go with it. And it's like the king and queen ruled for a thousand generations. It's like oh, or, or rather the the you know that bloodline, and then they were assassinated. And uh, it's described dynasty. as severing the royal bloodline forever, which is strange. If your if your family has been in in control for a thousand generations and then two of them are killed, you'd expect there to be a succession line that involves possibly shit tons of people. Yeah, like um, they don't say that like there was no other family members or that they only had there was just one person who could you know that sort of thing. It's, it's more so just accepted that like yep, those two died and that was that. It's like oh, maybe they'll explain more of this in the future Rebel Moon installments. Or, yeah, either in the sequel or the director's cut that you have to see. But obviously, and also yeah. we're doing the very, very cool thing that I love, which is uh, hyper-advanced sci-fi civilizations have a monarchy. Um, uh, a hey, bloodline hey, monarchy, well, which I, is fine well, to right, do, right, but it's like, we're at the point where it's, it's, it's really getting all of them. Old, like, <laughs> it's yeah, just, but, but I mean, you, uh, that's, compared to, we live in the sci-fi world with, like, a hyper, you know, uh, low technology, like Viking, you know, society that is producing grain and is necessary to produce grain for the massive galaxy spanning empire. The fact that they've got like a monarchy, it feels like, all right, that's, you know, compared to that, oh boy, that's not such a big deal. Um, also, they have uh, vagina portals. I thought that was, uh, they, they do have vagina really... portals. Yeah, they look a bit sus. Um, it makes me think that Zack Snyder has not seen a vagina, but he kind of knows, you know? Because they're sort of vaginal, but not like a lot, but sort of. I mean, that's the point, right? He doesn't want it to look too vaginal. You gotta get, he's got to get the idea in there so that we understand. It's like it's weird. It's like they birthing like the ships into other parts of the galaxy. It's beautiful, really. Yeah. There's so um, much to draw from it. So anyway. Family's fucked up, and a big old war senator man called Balisarius declares himself regent and sends his main man out into the other parts of the world to crush any and all rebellion against his control over the, uh, the Empire now. That's our baseline. Which is, you know, under, like, like it's pretty straightforward. It's just at the same time, like I said, I was kind of thrown off by the whole, like, thousand year, thousand generation dynasty destroyed because two members were killed. That seems yeah, odd. Yeah, they got assassinated. You figure that there would stabbed. have to be other people in the equation. Gotta be. And I, I think we are going to find out in uh, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, that there is a remaining family member. Probably. Because um, in this one, she is alluded to, uh, and so yeah. Well, I'm starting to wonder. She she looked after this girl, right? In in flashbacks or whatever, she was her personal guard. Our main character looked after the the important child, the life giver or whatever the fuck she's called. This all makes sense. Trust me. It's it's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, you know, he he managed to take. Powers. So he must have been pretty damn respected to have had at least control enough that he had at least like half of the empire behind him, or maybe he made them get the other in fear. I guess I feel so. like that would be a more interesting story than anything yeah. that we got. <laughs> but it's just sort of skipped over. It's like yeah, because um, it, it's like the uh, the the foundation series that Isaac Asimov wrote um, details intergalactic events across a pretty long span of time on an empire that's uh, a, a human empire that's absolutely massive in scale and how it can break apart and how, you know, generals can, you know, get this army to do that thing and start something over here and how most people have never even seen Earth or anything like that. And so the idea of, you know, galactic scale politics is potentially an interesting one. 
Um, and it will not be the story that we're really focusing in any way on. Yep. Uh, so then we meet our main character. Mm-hmm. What's our name? Our main character, Cora. Well, not not before we get our main title sequence, which looks like shit. I think. Um, oh yeah, it does oh. actually look really bad. Yeah. Um, just sort of awkwardly floating up there in space, which is you know fine. You can do that. It's just yeah, there, uh, there it, it is. Goes, rebel, yeah. rebel moon, rebel moon. Lead bearer. Yeah. And you get your choir too. Lots yep. of choir in this. The baseline sort of soundtrack is very eh. It's fine. I, and that's the thing. I am very in favor of choir, and they couldn't even get me. I was just like, oh, here comes that choir again. The same yeah. one for every scene where they think something interesting is happening. It's trying to, you know, was, to uh, dig up something that was really... Hmm. There was one portion where it really reminded me, not in sound, but in spirit with the yodeling for uh, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. There was one part in particular where I was like, oh, damn, I'm getting flashbacks to the yodeling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. no. Um, and we get shots like this. I, uh, I'll send it to you guys as well so you know which ones I'm talking yeah. about. But, you know, it, it, uh, just the, the way that the film is introduced, the part one, a child of fire thing. It's like, I'm sorry, that looks horrendously fake. I know that you think it looks amazing sci-fi, but I'm just sitting here like... It does look very fake. <laughs> um, uh, no good. Try again. Try something. Maybe, maybe try something subtle and interesting. Because um, this is also not wait. A, shouldn't it be? It. Shouldn't part one be above? Isn't that a little bit confusing? Because it's like it would make you think it's uh, Rebel yeah, Moon, a Child would, of Fire, it, part one, and then a Child of Fire, part yeah, two. I agree. Actually, yeah, you think part one should be above it, especially given that it is part one, a Child of Fire. Like that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, look, right? That's, look, it's not a big deal, okay? Well, we didn't talk about it. We just said it was a bit clunky, but yeah. knock out the parts and it still works. Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire, Rebel Moon, Scargiver could have been the way it works. Well, yeah. But oh well. Yeah, again, part one, I don't know. It's so funny because Star Wars, I know they have episode titles, but nobody about to mention really Wars. describes it that way compared to calling them Empire or Return of the Jedi, New Hope, mm, or, or just Star yeah, Wars, and it. then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, that sort of stuff. Even Tross, well, maybe TLJ, that's what and going for. If you don't think of it as Rebel Moon Part One. You remove that. Eventually, you know, you'll be saying like, "Oh, remember in A Child of Fire, and then in Scar Giver." And, and the answer will be no. Yeah. <laughs> so something that will strike you immediately is our main character is uh, doing something that's pretty strenuous. I believe it's referred to as tilling the land, or my I... plowing, plowing the land. Um, yeah. And already it's, it's like, okay, so we are in the far future where we can travel between stars across the galaxy, and you're doing, like, manual labor. Now, they give an explanation for it. It's not even just that, though. Connected. She's so tiny, and she's a part of a big community, yeah. and she's the only one doing this right now? What's going on? I guess she It's kind of weird. Like well, we, was, we get the implication that they're all partying it. and she's not joined them yet, but... Yeah, because she's not part of the community, you know? This is pretty... It's some subtle... It's it's some subtle storytelling, you know? I just, um... You know that lady from uh, Ant-Man 3 and Mandalorian? The one that popped uh, up? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know you're Her, talking about. Or, like, a Gina Carano-built person. Like, I really do feel like you should probably grab someone, especially for everything that she's gonna do in this movie. Like, um, I think I saw someone describing it. She's like 5'5 five five in real life as well or something. She's like Galadriel. But she's just this tiny, tiny... At least Galadriel's an elf. At least you have that. I guess. Uh, it's a regular person. Yeah, she doesn't have any enhancements, powers, history, or species benefits. She's just a tiny twig she's human. Just, uh, You'd be like, yeah, yeah well, she has military training. Gal. And it's like, military... That doesn't... <laughs> like, knowing things doesn't make your muscles bigger. It just doesn't. Uh, you could make your muscles bigger by knowing things, but obviously, you know, there's not much the actress can do to hide the fact that she's a very, very, very tiny lady. And it's just yeah. um, she's her her role in this film is to be quite strong. Uh, like I said, fine with training and and aspects that can come with that. It just uh, it's going to be awkward when she's doing heavy lifting slash strength requirement things and beating people up with uh, a lot of raw strength stuff. It was, it was talked about, but like, we saw Extraction 2, it was quite a good moment with uh, a girl having to beat some guys in that, she had to fight pretty two damn guys. difficult. She had to get into hand-to-hand combat with two guys in a, um, in a train car, and I think it was in like the conductor's compartment of a train, and boy, 
it was tough. Yeah. She to came out of that it. fight and she was bruised and she she she'd taken a beating and she had to work really hard to get those guys down. And I really, really appreciate that they showed that. Yes, indeed. Uh, it wasn't just an easy, yeah, I'm just gonna beat you and blurg. Then she um she grabs a bit of the soil and and does a sniff, which is uh I think supposed to be like you do that, don't you? You often give the soil a little sniff. A little sniff, yeah. Sometimes. A little sniff. A little sniff. Um, Yum. You gotta sniff it to make sure it's good for growing crops. Exactly. It tells us a lot about her that she she's just happy to be a, a person who's got a nice place to be. She's she's got a history. You see, it's gonna be revealed gradually. She's uh. It's gonna be revealed gradually and eloquently. Yeah, right? she's. You could Something call her a child of fire. I would say. Yeah, she's a child like of fire. That. Right now, she's a child of dirt, but she will become a child of fire because she is a child of fire. Mm hmm. Yep. So, um, yeah. Anyway, the guy, guy man comes. Guy from Haunting of Hill House. Uh, I forget that's his right. name. He's also Steve. in Game of Thrones. Uh, that's oh, right. I you mean the actor's name, but yeah, <laughs> Steve. Yes, we can call him Steve with ease. Let's just call him Steve. I feel like Steve is appropriate as well because he is very much a just an average kind of guy. Well, he, he like is Steve like if like... Stephen from uh, Hill House were dropped in here and had to deal with all of this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's trying right. to be reasonable. <laughs> he probably is the best character in the film, I guess. I, think so. I think so. Yeah, I'd say so. Um. Which is obviously very loose, but yeah, they they go back to the little party place, and uh, we find out it's like it's like mating season, <laughs> and the the harvest will be better if everybody fucks. That's what uh that's what Modoc says. Uh, who is these there? These are su these are very superstitious people. Yes. Well, he says we have to offer a sacrifice. Go home and fuck tonight so that the crops grow. Exactly. And he's here with his very real beard. Oh, by the way, just w again, worth, worth, so they're like, they're basically Norse. They're like a, a Norse Viking like village. We're also very are. interconnected and familiar with the sci fi world, which is completely culturally different. Like, uh, well, completely culturally and technologically different. Um, like, yeah, when you'd I almost believe these are guys Norse, are like, like um, it's uh, a different movie. Yeah, but yeah, pretty much. Like, what? Because again, Norse like is almost is doing a lot of work for it. It's basically Norse. They're like a, a Viking village. <laughs> they're like they're like In Norse Amish. Like they they refuse to engage yeah. with the world beyond their little tiny settlement. Except that they absolutely do. Except um, they do, yeah. Yeah. Not only do they, but it turns out that they're going to be real significant because um, their 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 output by hand. Is like actually valuable economically, like on a massive scale to massive entities in this world. Which valuable, is, like, yeah. to the Which point is, uh, that the primary yeah. villainous faction and the primary rebellious faction both try to receive grain from this. From this a piece small of people. village of maybe what two thousand Vikings. Two thousand. I was going to say like thirty, like th like yeah, fifty yeah, at most. Uh, like, well, I'm assuming that there might be other people who live in the village. It's small. Yeah, you that's why I said that number that high. In, yeah, uh, you can walk across <laughs> the village in like three minutes by foot. It's tiny, and apparently they have enough grain output by hand that it's actually economically valuable to industrialize civilization. It's um. This is what you would call bad world building. Um, if this is absurd. Are... They're so minuscule, there's no fucking way that they would- It's so funny, there's a planet for mining cobalt in, that they establish in this, but there's not a planet for farming food. There's just agriculture. There's no agricultural worlds. There's no especially, worlds dedicated to agriculture. Especially if there are, you know, planets that potentially have incredibly fertile soil. You imagine that- And if this is like a thousands of years old empire that's like charted massive swaths of the galaxy, you figure that this is a problem that they would have figured out, like, of, of making sure that they've actually got enough food to feed themselves to where a small village is irrelevant. A small village making their yeah, output... Yeah, it's, it's not even worth but going there. Remember, in their words, was only about enough, just enough to feed themselves, because it was something like 10,000 of whatever the unit of measurement was, bushels. is what they needed. Bushels, yeah. Yeah, every year. Which, by the and way, they could make 12,000. Bushels which... need to be processed. <laughs> You can't um, just yeah, it's just a, that, yeah. Raw, yeah the raw food amount yeah. But I guess the thing to lay out is they can only make just enough to feed their tiny village. Yet the empire, like the mother world, are like pretty fixated on exploiting them for 
enough to feed what? Well, yeah, to, to the point in where their words are like a thousand people in a year. To the point where the equivalent of Darth Vader visits in order to get this place going. Which, by Pretty the way, much. He's, he if, is incredibly. He's not just some random. Maybe we're jumping ahead. Like, we should probably slow down. Actually, no, I <laughs> should, yeah, we will. Whoa, we'll get there. Whoa, we'll get yeah. there. It won't take long to actually get to that thing because most of this stuff is fucking useless. Like. Again, I want to appreciate Modok as the leader of their village. It's nice to see him it's all great. the time. Yeah, uh, Darren is dead. There's only Modok. There's only really bearded Modok now. Beard. A really bad looking beard, too. Yeah. It's... Looks super fake. But he's a man of the land. That's why he has it's a beard. It's not the only fake beard we'll see. I yeah, there's no, plenty. No, not actually. There's more than one. Um, And then it's like, there's a guy who killed some thing that we're all eating, and he's interested in you. You should date him. And there's particularly shitty line and it's it's indicative of how bad that was another thing that struck me in this I was just like god I, I i talk about it all the time whenever i'm watching something that has good dialogue i'm always like i'm i feel safe even if the story won't be good because i can at least have those little bits along the way of like eh, yeah ooh, eh, we're getting eh. we're getting we got some character work here you know like um what killed the dinosaurs the ice age like i'm like that's that's such good dialogue that i'll be safe for the whole <laughs> movie meanwhile yeah, pretty much it's yeah. like uh, she says it's quite impressive, and then the guy next to her, who I guess is the one that took her in, is like, "What is the animal?" Or and then he looks over at the guy, and it focuses on him, and then he the unfocuses comes back to her. He turns back around, and he goes, "The hunter," and it's like, <laughs> like I figured yeah. that. Like, why did you make that so explicit? And it's funny in retrospect because it doesn't fucking matter. He's gone no, for the rest of the movie, relevant. this character. Yeah, you might think that he's our Gaston type character, but no, he's just not a part of the movie. Yeah, you the... think that for a lot of characters that we get introduced yes. to in the first act, oh, they're going to be important only for them not. to not be. <laughs> Maybe they will be they in part two, yeah. bro. Uh, I mean, yeah, it turns sure, out, yeah, honestly, yeah. that no one's important. Well, except for main lady. Scott Cora. Gibber. She's gonna be great. Yeah, that's right, Cora. Yeah. Um, if so... you if if you're making a movie or a story and you need a name for your lady protagonist, gee, fucking Christ, don't call her Cora. Never call her Cora. Stop. How many Coras have you come across? For... Uh, it's just like it seems like that like basic basic kind of name that you give a character. Just don't. You know, it annoys me. Bringy, do you take issue with the name Cora? Um, well, I can only think of three. There's, because there's Korra from The Legend of Korra, this Korra, and wasn't there a Korra in that Mass Effect, the Andromeda, as well? <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, yeah, Korra's are striking out, huh? <laughs> well, it's just that, well, I, I don't know about that the third one, really, but, like, it's it's just, it seems like it's kind of, we need, like, a, a vaguely science fiction slash fantasy sounding name yeah. that's kind of a real name. Korra, there you go, got it. I'm gonna... I want to read what she says in this scene, because sure. the idea is that this this guy is like, you're finally a part of our community, it's been two seasons, and the last thing you need to do is have, like, a, a, a husband or whatever, and then you'll be fully integrated. And she, she seems a little, like, you know, off, and it's like, what's going on? She gives a little speech, she says, The two seasons here have given me happiness I don't deserve, to love and to be loved. I don't know if I'm capable of either. The very idea of love and family was beaten out of me. I was taught that love is weakness. I don't know that will ever change. Sad face. Yes, yeah, so what when I saw that, I was stunned. I couldn't believe that we were actually doing a massive exposition dump to explain every facet of this character, or at least super duper essential ones in the most plain text possible. What, 10 minutes into the film at this yeah, point? Um, we're 10 minutes in and we knew exactly what I was, we were I was in for. Stunned. Oh boy. I, I was actually kind of, I was, I was shocked. We, uh, like, we, that was unbelievable. Talked about it before, but lines like that, that's supposed to be said by us or people like us, not the characters. Yeah, or, at most, she says it near the end of the film after we've had all of this available to us and made, like, to where we could know this about her because of what we've seen happen in the film. But I don't know who she is, and she's she's yeah, openly why is declared... she behaving like this? Why she's is openly she acting declared this, this character that probably would know a lot of these things anyway. It's really for us, so well, we know everything that there is to know about her. That, we, haven't, um, like it, we haven't met the bad guys yet, but I, I was already like, uh-oh. When you say, like, they teach you that love is weakness, like, oh, God, they're that oh, kind yeah, of bad guy. At this point, you, you figure it's like, oh, so she was part of the bad guys, and, and she's... And the bad like, guys are cringe. Guy. 
Yeah, and bad guys, yeah, are, bad mega guys are like super hyper, like cartoonishly evil. Oh yeah, as we'll find out. And um, again, this is another one of my pet peeves for uh, fiction writing. Uh, it turns out that in the real world, we figured out how to have really good soldiers, and it's not to like beat the love out of them <laughs> and to make sure they don't care about anything around them. Turns out that soldiers, being human beings, uh, you should treat them well and invest in their emotional well-being and teach them teamwork and resilience mm -hmm. and to, to fight for things they care for. It turns out this is actually, seems to be the optimum way to train soldiers, as many thousands of years of human experimentation have done. But, oh, that's not edgy. That's not cool. No, we have to have, they were, we be told not to love anything and that love is weakness and you have to have hatred and violence and all that stuff. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Okay, well, that's not very interesting. Okay, well, I'm sure you think that's very cool, Zach. All right, well, fair enough. Yeah, and it, it was just like, well, that's what we're in for. Great. Yep. Yeah, um, here we go, boys. So it was at this point when I was watching it, and when Free is watching it for the first time, we both said the same thing, which is, "So how long till this village gets attacked?" Yeah, yep. uh, and then <laughs> this this was, was a shockingly was predictable movie. It was just yes. so we're all clear. It was about ten seconds after I said it that you hear a big loud sound from the big ship coming in. Yeah. I was it was like, oh wow, I did not think I was going to be that correct that quick. But well, yeah, so it's it's like it. it's like hmm, farm person who yearns yearns for a different life and is uh, awkwardly trying to fit in, but doesn't seem to quite be able to make it. And uh, this is all upended by an empiric force arriving on the planet. Yeah, hmm. Call to adventure is coming. Hmm. This is something that plenty of stories have done. Okay. There's no reason to yeah, think this right isn't great. Right so, with the big bad mother world arriving, we need to figure out what our plans are as this tiny community. And it seems to be pretty clear pretty quick that Father Sindri is his name, uh, Modok. Modok. He's, uh, Modok's like, these guys, they're bad news, and I don't like them. And then uh, Steven is like, yeah, okay, but we should probably like barter with them, and maybe we could even get a really good price. Which is like, yeah, and that'll I guess make sense. And he's like, we can we can start a partnership. And then Cora's like, a partnership? These guys destroy everything. Wah, 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 wah. Which, uh, in retrospect, now I was thinking, like, isn't that interesting? The fact that none of them care that she knows them well. Yeah, you would think that a lot of them would be because I I think the the read you meant to have is that nobody is like nobody knows that much about her. Like she's around and everything, mm -hmm. but that. A lot She's about been her, here so for two seasons, though. That's yeah, th that's which we don't know how long a season is. Still, <laughs> I'm not it's sure. Either, yeah, it's either yeah, half a year we, or two years. So, yeah. but, but the the point being that there should be two reactions. One reaction would be the first thing they say is. Cora, you've dealt with them. Like, what do we do? That would be reaction one if they know that she's had a history with them, or if she says this and they don't know she's had a history with them. It's like, wait, how do you know that? Like, yeah. what the fuck? There, there needs to be more of a reaction to what she said. Well, um, it gets weird because uh, there is a scene to be had here that would be interesting, but we start getting too much like conflicting information because Steven's uh, like sort of chastised by Modok by being like, "You sold grain to the enemies of the Mother World. Imagine what they'll do to us if they find that out." And it's like, wait, so is your position that we shouldn't sell to them because we just shouldn't because they're evil, or that we shouldn't sell to them because, like, if they were to discover that we've helped their enemies, that they might hurt us, or that we shouldn't deal with them at all because it, it, we, we've got no choice. They're coming. So, what are we doing? What's the plan? And the, obviously, the the straight up thing to me is just like they're so far advanced and there's so much more manpower that we should probably just do everything they say. And that's actually what Cora says: do everything they say, just don't volunteer anything. Which is like, Which, okay, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, yep. All right. Makes enough sense. Right, That's yeah. about right. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, it's like, okay, this will be awkward then, but uh, this is just, they, they've established Modoc and Steven have different perspectives on how to deal with this. And so... Yes. So th there is some character writing here. Something's happening. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, and then they arrive. And, uh, um, and they address, like, the... <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the Motherworld army guys, are just, they're just dressed like Nazis. It's pretty they're funny. Just, they're just the. It's just the Imperium from Warhammer 40k. It's just well, they're the like shitty the, they're like the Hellgast Warhammer. from uh, Killzone. You know, 
like, it's some, it, this well, is shitty Warhammer. It's, yeah, let's, just, let's cut to the chase of just, just you're just like, uh, Warhammer. here we go. As soon as you see them, you're like, oh, you're evil. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, you're evil. Okay. Well, and, and played by the actor that plays evil characters constantly. Evil British guys. Yeah, he's just Francis. We're going to call him Francis. And Francis is here. I don't even remember. Is his name something noble? I think I can't remember. Um, I'm just calling him Francis. So Francis Noble. <laughs> so the uh, the thing about him is this actor. We'll say this when check it out. It's like he always does the the meme of like, "Hello, oh, it's nice to see you. Oh, I'm everything's polite, wonderful. Bra, I'm evil now. I'm gonna break your skull open. Bra." He's like, "Oh, that's that's cr like oh like the he's almost like the." The upper class bureaucrat, but he's got a monster inside of him. I was like, okay, mm, all righty. Something like that, yeah. Never seen it before. It's so cool and interesting. And there's a lot it's of just. A, it's an original idea, yeah. Yeah, I think the oh Admiral Atticus Noble, that's his name. And sure, see, he's, his his name is Noble. He's not very he's noble. Not noble. That's really clever, Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a that's minute. A re... That's a really he clever name. No... Oh shit. Oh my god, that's actually, yeah, it's got a double meaning. Yeah, it's, incredible. It's, it's, I don't know, it's a guy whose name that, yeah, it's, it's a thing, it is noble, it's, it's very I funny. think we're supposed to think it's, like, subversive, I guess, that he's, like, I welcome, the king's people the guy, welcome you to a warm embrace, and they give him a hug, a really long hug. They give him a hug. Yeah, yeah it's and then, really awkward. yeah, the, the guy standing behind him with the, the red skull outfits from Resident Evil 4 <laughs> are there. And yeah. the big ship, and everyone's afraid. And yeah, I've seen Star Wars, so I know it's going to happen. Well, they have oh, a reputation just, uh, apparently yeah, of fucking raising planets. And this is what I mean. Yeah. It's so funny when you watch a movie for the first time, you kind of take it for what it is. And I think at this point, I was fine with the film um, in terms of just like, okay, let's see what happens. I'm not happy with the dialogue quality, not happy with the pacing already. I feel like it's already kind of looking like some other movies I'm familiar with, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. But now that I've seen the whole movie, I now know that the mother world is known for just fucking rampaging through planets and destroying them all. So it's like, so why wouldn't they just be terrified? What do you do with the whole, like, oh, I'm gonna give you a little hug and pretend everything is fine? It's like, you guys know and, that everyone knows what you do, right? And again, if that's gotten around, you would think that there would be either, they, they would either be like, oh, they found us, it's over, or they would actually organize, like, real defenses. Or that you know? they would prepare what their story's gonna be. Yeah, like that they they have a story prepared for when they inevitably show up. Mm -hmm. But no, not no, they're just totally unprepared for them. And again, when you talk about like the first of many instances of a hyper clash between aesthetics, of you've now got like like your your like Nordic village, your like Norse Amish Viking village <laughs> with like a hyper industrialized hyper militarized space Nazis. And this is the first of many instances of these massively clashing visuals that are clearly just things that he's grabbed onto. It's all from stuck like together. Other film. It's it's all just the the storytelling visual vocabulary of other stories for like various different genres and different points in history, but thrown this movie together without has any no elegance. identity. No, no it's it doesn't. just a, it's a bunch of things that are just stuck together. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't feel like it has any identity of its own. It's just it's it's oh, like yeah. every, all the all itself. the free Unity store assets have been crammed <laughs> together into this movie. So <laughs> the game doesn't feel like it's its own thing. True. So yeah, to sort of we're not going to cover like everything. I'll just sort of just skip to the the part that's interesting is that he's like, "We want your grain. Let's have a partnership." And I think he explicitly mentions surplus uh, near the beginning. We would like to have access to what you know you can't, you don't even use. And uh, Sindri's like, "Well, I'm oh, sorry, Modok <laughs> is is like, uh, we don't actually have any surplus. We actually barely have enough to feed our own. And the fact that you see." That we've got really big fields that are clearly more than we could possibly feed for ourselves is actually evidence that uh, the land is so bad it's not fertile at all. We have to have these huge fields because you know so much of it dies. I guess is the logic. Yeah, and I was... the, f the soil fertility is so low. That's why we have to yeah plow so and much of so many. Fields. Also, me and Ryan are pretty shocked by this because it's like oh, they can tell whether or not what you're saying is true. They can just yeah, go they check. Can, yeah, they can test. They can go they like, can oh, this is fertile soil. soil. And then, this and then it, furthermore, yeah. you're like, why do you think they're here? They also, believe this place is fertile. Or not. I don't know if Sindri's lying or if he's telling the truth. Oh, he's lying. Uh, no, I think, I think we're, meant to, we're meant to conclude the soil is excellent. 
the, the, yeah, really the, we're supposed to there. think that the, the place here is actually really bountiful and good, and that's part of the reason why the fucking mother world showed up. Is like, oh, that, it's I the, took the, the wrong. I, okay, then I took the wrong thing, but the right thing is worse. Yes, uh, it, yes. it, it oh, makes no I fucking sense at all. What? This, this is they. They have lots of surplus grain, and they end up selling it uh, yearly to different people. Remember, the last people they sold it to was yeah. the the blood axe siblings. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. The blood. Yeah, that's the name of the rebel moon rebel moon leaders is blood axe. Blood axe. That's so fucking blood cringy. Axe. Yep. Blood. Oh, but you like Luke Skywalker, don't you? They're the same. Skywalker is right. nothing like. Yeah, blood Skywalker's axe. way better than blood axe. What the hell? Well, no, I. <laughs> I, no, that's that's how I feel. I'm just saying that that's what someone's gonna say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, bold faced lie from Sindri that I guess he's trying to do in order to. to it feels weird calling him Sindri actually because of the other Sindri that I really like. Yeah, yeah. He is Modok. I'm sorry. Well, my notes are all built with their actual character names. <laughs> so yeah, I... you should have made your notes with the meme names. You got... <laughs> You, got, you gotta uh, use the main names for it's true. Lady, you got Francis. Wouldn't it be got, fucking amazing uh, if it was actually just Modok? He was the floating <laughs> machine thing. He's the leader of this village. Yeah. And they're just except, except now he's got a beard. He's got like yes. a, he's got a he's got a beard made of um what like felt or something. <laughs> like and, and like everyone a, everyone treats it completely hard. seriously. No one ever brings it up. It's like yeah yeah he's, exactly. He's, yeah, it's Modok. Um. So yeah, uh, it's the first thing that strikes me is just like, why would he try lying so hard to people who are so destructive when the proof is literally around them? Like it's it's not so. They've got spaceships that can have it cable. We say this so they many can times. Cross the galaxy. Interstellar they can travel. Can <laughs> they can probably scan. All right, and that's probably why they're here. You can probably just look at it and they know. We said it was outrageous that they would fucking turn up like this, especially the equivalent of Darth Vader in terms of the Mother World's, like, hierarchy. And yet, here they are. So you should probably do what Korra said, actually, and just, just tr they, give them whatever they want. Whatever they say, just, just be on their good side. But no, he, uh, Modok lies to them quite explicitly. <laughs> and it's like, that's yep. probably not a good idea. And immediately, it's like the first thing he does. Yeah, and, um, yeah. you know, obviously this guy's super evil and everything, but he is being... 100% clean and nice in the in this sequence. The, 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 it's obviously to provide a juxtaposition of when he turned... Like, we're, we're all waiting for the moment where he we becomes crazy and evil. Him. We're all waiting for Unhinged. But, kind of until he does, you should probably treat him as though he is, like, a chill, happy dude. You know, everything's fine, right? But, anyway, they get in, and uh, uh, Evilman notices that everyone here isn't exactly starving, and the fields look big and good, so what's going on? It doesn't really make sense. And it's so funny, because it's just like, yeah, why did you say what you said, Modok? <laughs> what the fuck have you done? Like, because now it's just, he's gradually yeah. figuring it out. And then he's like, who's in control of the harvest? And it's Steven. He's like, maybe you can explain to me what's going on. Why am I, why am I so mistaken? And Steven clunkily basically says, yeah, we can, we can sell you our surplus. And then bad guy's like, wait a minute. I thought you didn't have any, according to your leader over there. And then, and then Steven's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's that he, we don't, uh, I think we have enough to sell. He thinks we only have enough to take care of us in case there's a famine. Which lines up enough. Yeah, that's, that's, that's reasonable. I think, I, I think this is totally reason. reasonable. Like, um, and, and this unfortunately is, for them, Francis is unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, well, Francis basically yeah. says, so, like, this is insubordination and the, what, you know, you need to show your strength and... When someone's yeah. insubordinate, you gotta... And everyone's, like, freaking out because it, it looks well, like he's gonna beat Steven to death. When it's pretty obvious, it's like, no, he's gonna kill Modok. Yeah, well, because... Funnily enough, there's a good version of all of this. Um, so, he, yeah, he he f does a 180 flip, and instead of beating Steven, he beats Modok to death, and it's all very shocking. The funnier part of this is Modok's wife screams in, in you know, yeah, pain nobody, and nobody fear and runs to the body, to and then she's yeah. cut down by a guy with a lightsaber. <laughs> Yeah. But nobody so, else, like, did anything. Well, uh, yeah, so this is the thing, even if all these lads have lightsabers and guns that aren't currently active, and you've got a crowd of, what, like, 30 people in this room, if you just rush them, they're dead. Yep, yeah, pretty much. And they, they just slaughter their leader right in front of them, but, you know, I'm not gonna say it's impossible for them all to be so terrified they do nothing, it's like, okay, yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. I just thought... When they just they just cut down a grieving widow, it's just like God. You guys are so evil. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but whatever. Uh, the good vision, I would have said, at least somewhat, for a super evil character is to make it clear that he wants Steven in charge because he's clearly the more reasonable one and that we kill someone to make everyone afraid of us. And I thought that's what we were going to get. Just that's the normal thing, even even for a cartoonishly evil faction, right? Which I don't like, but whatever. Um, well, a cartoonishly evil faction... No, I guess he said cartoonishly. Never mind. No, they're cartoonish. He, um, so then he, uh, instead of doing anything that I could consider to be remotely, like, understandable, he says, how long will it take for the harvest to complete? Steven says, I think, nine months or ten months. And then he nine says... Weeks. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and then he'll be like, okay, I'll be back in twelve, and I ten. want... No, he wants ten bushels. Ten. No, wait, ten weeks and he no, wants he twelve says bushels. He says he'll be back in, ten, back in ten and he wants twelve thousand bushels or whatever. Oh, I think they create twelve and he wants ten. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, they they yeah. can make it in nine me we weeks. We <laughs> they can make it in nine weeks. He's gonna come back in ten, and he wants ten thousand bushels, and they can only make twelve thousand. Yeah, and so he says like, "We'll starve if you do that." And then he's like, "I don't give a fuck." And it's already just like, "Oh fuck it." Already, it's oh, like, well, oh, I mean, oh, they're cartoonishly well, I mean, evil and stupid. If, if oh, they okay. if you if they starve, they can't make. What more is food, the point? So. It's so stupid. Like. And, I... and also, and, and now to put it into perspective, we need ten thousand. We're going to give you twelve thousand, and this is a, a town of of what? Like, again, maybe three hundred people. Why would they be here trying to get food that could only feed maybe a hundred people for a year with a, a minor amount of surplus, or at least just not enough? Any, you know, it wouldn't be significant. Um, I'm trying to think of like how how if you have to make this work. So like, well, would there be many of these settlements, and that you send out many envoys from the mother world to set up the the deals, and so they're everywhere, right? Like, there's uh, potentially thousands of these exchanges happening. Like, okay, maybe I could buy that, but then it wouldn't be fucking Darth Vader showing up to this one. Like, it would be just randoms that representative of the mother world or whatever. Well, you could probably be like a bureaucrat or something. Well, what's funny is like you might expect watching this like, oh, is there another reason they're here? Like, no, no, they just want food. They it's want a, some it's grain. It's literally for a bit of food. They cross the galaxy on their teleportation devices with their massive battleship to, to get a little bit they of need food to get some food. They establish at the beginning that if they sell to them, they will pay triple market value. That gets thrown out by the end of this scene because they killed Modok after they decided he was just too much of a liar, and now they just want to take all of their grain, letting them die. It's just like, what what happened to the triple market? Because I thought that that was kind of a vaguely okay idea in terms of like, yeah, they'll like you if you pay triple. They'll probably exclusively sell to you, and then they can grow their operation. Yeah, that all makes sense. Grow and grow yeah. and grow. Yeah, you, you're basically setting up a, a partnership with this village that they will grow lots of food for you, and you will buy it, and everyone gets what they want and then they like you and then you know like empire building if you're building an empire you want everyone to to like you and do things for you well, and so if they're just gonna kill the leader and then let everyone starve it's like why bother with any of this why not just kill them all what's going on what's the why like why why all of these weird decisions um, I would have thought this. Was, he even mentions how they can get robots in to help them and Modok is like we don't like robots we like doing it by hand I was just like, okay, well, in any case, why don't they just take the farm for themselves? Why don't they just use robots to do their own agriculture? Yeah, why do they need Wait, this you, village? You think they have servant robots? That's weird. Why? No, I'm, I'm setting up a thing. He's setting up a, a joke. He's setting up a thing, because they have those. They do, yeah. Well, because I mean, they have because they have those in their they, they they have those and they use them to move boxes from point well, to I, point. But I don't know if that he's already mentioned them. Like he's already said that at this point in the movie that they can have robots to do all this stuff. Yeah. So like, is, that's what I mean. I just don't get why not do that. Um, well, because the person who wrote this is a child who needs wait an evil, a minute teenager right? who needs a cartoonish evil empire. See, here's the thing. Here's what you really want to do. If you want to set up an evil empire, first off. Don't. It's overplayed. Uh, they're boring, right? Make a make like an antagonistic empire or an empire that like, if your allies with them, Maybe they will do anything for you. But if you cross them, clash. they're super bloodthirsty, right? If you are or, their you enemy know. or if you betray them, they will ruthlessly destroy you. But if you work with them, they're actually quite a good ally to have, and it's good to work with them. Just don't step out of line. So if you want to write an empire like that, right? You set up this idea that they will like invest and they will give you all the things you need they will grow your village so that you can give them the things that they want because even if they're evil they still have to eat 
and they still need infrastructure and they have to feed their armies and they need like that's the whole point of that's the whole point of building an empire is that you have a bunch of people out there and they answer to you and they do what you say so even if you're evil you need them to do the thing you need them around to do stuff for you well, you can't go uh, around just blowing up planets and killing everyone. Well, it was mentioned as well, they're enormous, the Mother World faction. Why would they care about this tiny, tiny farming settlement it, on some planet? It's absurd. Like, the, the entire, like, premise of the inciting incident is absurd. That the massive galaxy-spanning empire really, 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 really needs the agricultural output of a tiny Norse village. And if... If the compa- we'll start making the comparisons, but this just reminds me of talking about TFA, to be honest with you. It's like... But why were the Empire on Tatooine? Like, well, because that's where the plans to the Death Star ended up. So yeah, they the needed to get them. Yeah, the whole idea of Tatooine is a backwater. Retroactively, it's been turned into the most important planet in yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Tatooine was bumfuck nowhere. It's, like, not a, an important place. So anyway, <laughs> they, uh, they leave, and they leave behind a squad of, I think, about, well, one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and these thirteen guys. Are guys. Crazy evil. Except one. Except for one guy. Except for one guy who also doesn't yeah. show up after the end of the first act. Yeah, yes. I was about um, to say, like he just disappears. Yeah. He disappears, but he's okay. Everybody else is a psycho. They're they're insane. Yeah, they're like insane. It's a bunch evil. of soldiers. They leave. It doesn't take long to establish that. Presumably no. to stay here for ten weeks while Pretty they're away. Within, within a minute, they're all characterized as psychos. Why do they even leave them there? I'm not well. Uh, so, I thought that the the best thing to do if you want complete control of this probably would be to leave a squad that can make sure everything is in line and that everything's running well and that they understand the mother world is in charge. But make sure they're you know friendly. Have the community work with them, not against them. Yeah, you use and, them to help. You think that you would leave with them like agricultural experts and some guys to help, like and and some equipment. Like here's how you test soil quality, and here's the best kind of seed mixture, and here's the best for plant placement like you leave behind people who know what they're doing but instead they leave behind like a, a dozen soldiers with guns and imagine but, as like, well like i can't be saying this but like, like a scene oh, where wow, the man. robot is very robotically doing farming and then if modok wasn't killed he's like gradually getting to the point of understanding the robot is more than just mechanical that it does have like learning capabilities and then he actually explains the value of hand doing everything and like why we you know just a scene yeah. that's like the robot understanding better ways to farm from like a hand you know and it just there's be commentary on like industry versus uh handmade shit and stuff yeah. it'd be fun oh well instead, <laughs> you don't get any of those I, scenes I, but the only the reason they leave... just decide to shoot the robot for shits and giggles oh yeah this robot by the way and voiced the... by anthony hopkins so that's nice that's <laughs> yeah so <unfair. laughs> but that's about it that's so unfair, it's so, unfair. so... Yeah, I, I, I don't. I think it's pointless to leave soldiers there. You just show back up in ten weeks, and it, you. Take yeah, yeah. These have, these people are so small. Yeah. I guess the worst thing that would happen is they all just move. But I mean, I don't even know why any of this is happening anyway. You know I what just, I mean? Like yeah, it's, it's all just it's so dumb. Like it, it, I talked about this on FNT. I was like, their their strategy. We'll get there. We're almost to the to the premise of the whole movie. I just like, well, couldn't they just like go hide in some cave? Like, are the Mother World really gonna fucking scour the planet to find these farmers and be like, you tried to take away our 10,000 bushels? <laughs> We're gonna get you for that one. It took us 30,000 bushels worth of uh, supplies to get here for this 10,000. They may as well just go to like the local fucking Walmart and buy their food. Why do they need to do this? Well, they're an empire. Exactly. They've got this shit sorted out. No, Rags, he said that the insurgents have been damaging their supply chain. Oh my goodness. So they need the farmers in this tiny settlement. Ugh. So anyway, yeah, the robot is uh, is here to just assist with carrying things, and we find out he's, uh, he's, he's like, loyal to the, the royal bloodline, and that he, he used to be a warrior in the, in, the, in the war, but he's decommissioned now, he just moves boxes. Well, they, they uh... Yeah, the, he's just moving boxes around. This uh, highly advanced android is just moving boxes around. And then they shoot him and for no reason because they're jerks and they're bad and the Empire's bad. And then they say, go get cleaned up. Go to the river and get cleaned up. And so he spends all day washing mud off of himself. And then he starts randomly talking to this girl that walks up and telling her this story instead of doing his job. 
that he was supposed to do. Yeah, I was very confused by this. He's programmed directly to assist them in moving shit. He gets shot so that his face falls in mud, and so he needs to clean it off. Then he just has a sit down and ponders. It's like, oh. You know, I'm all for uh, robots and, and androids and stuff that, that have more to them than simple programming, but I thought oh, yeah. that's what he was. Like, you have to be careful how you build that up, because now I'm, it's at odds with my idea of, like, why would they have this? Why would they want a robot that randomly gets caught in his own thoughts and walks off and looks at the sun and the stars? It's like, yeah, that's, that's not that's useful. Not what <laughs> like, we want. Yeah. We'll just have a soldier if, if we're going to do that. We'll just have a exactly. guy. Exactly. Regular persons does that really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this scene is uh, hyper-forced in terms of these two know nothing about each other. This girl would likely fear the robot since he is a member of the invading force that just killed their leader. I don't know also, why. It is, a, it is a talking robot, and this is a little weird Norse village that uses horses and plows. Yeah, they don't even do the thing of her being like, holy mo- you're like a person, but you're not made of flesh. You're hard. You're, you're metal. Yeah, you're a metal man. They don't even do that. She's just chill with it. She's like, hey, man. <laughs> What's up? And he's like, yeah. It's, you know. yeah and then he just fucking good. spills his whole backstory on yeah. it. We get another exposition. Ex exposition dump. It's so bad. Yeah, the, by the way, because we haven't, I don't know if we've been highlighting that well, but that's like the third exposition dump already. Um, yeah, we're only like 20 minutes into the film. There's like 17 of them. It's absurd. Left. Yeah, many more left. Yeah, and Many we're learning virtually nothing about a lot of these characters, and instead we're just getting a lot of backstory. A lot of it just doesn't... It's totally unnecessary. Well, we don't need to know, lore. like, really any of this. It's not character, it's lore. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. We're learning some Rebel Moon lore. Mm, and it's very interesting lore, too. Very it's fascinating. And... I'm not gonna harp on it for too long, but maybe this shot mm -hmm. illustrates it. If we find more in future, I'll highlighted as well but this is what i was seeing people share too in terms of uh oh wait hang on um it, it, so we we brought it up earlier but zach has created two of the ugliest fucking movies in the history of film um can you see how the robot's torso and head is very in focus and then like not but only his are his legs blurry. and her face blurry but they're also like jaggedly blurry they're not they're not like gaussian blur i think it would be called in uh yeah Photoshop. i don't they it's like the Army of the Dead thing that he did. Yeah. Where a lot of shit is just out of focus in a very distracting way. It's very weird for a no shot like this. Why? For things outside. Like, picture a circle in the center of the frame is all that's allowed to be in focus. Everything else just goes. Bleh. It's like, why, why would you want this? It's weird because maybe, Zach, I would like to look at something intermittently that isn't the thing right in the middle of the frame. Maybe I'd like to look around at the environment or something. Maybe. You know? No, Maybe you don't want to. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, you want to look at my thing? This thing right here. Look at this. Look at the thing. You just... uh, at this point, just shoot the, the whole movie through a scope so I have no temptation. Um, She makes a little flower thing hat for him. It's so cute. And then he blushes. Yeah, yeah he blushes. Like, the lights that glow up, at, like, that light up on his face and those little holes there. They go yeah, like they pinkish. they've turned like orangey yellow. Because I guess I guess they designed the, the robot face. to blush. <laughs> they, they're designed <laughs> it to do that. I don't to know. be able to show Again, that remember, emotion. I, I am like very pro robot. Yes. Like movie characters. I Wally is one of my favorite films. Like I, I robot characters are super cool. Robots are great. As a premise, we love um, robots. This is fun robots. Love me robot this characters. This is super lame. Basically, the thing that's doing the heavy lifting is that it's Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, who delivers all these lines just like you'd like him to, Very because well. at this point I don't yeah. think he can deliver a line badly. But the, uh, the the sad part of this is like, yeah, it's like the really lame, uh, you introduce dog and then kill it to make everyone sad thing. This is, look, it's a robot, wow. but he feels things. It's like, wait, whoa, 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 slow down. you got to, like, but, give us well, reason for this reason, shit. There's a reason why they didn't slow down. It's because you might look at this and the amount of significance they've given the robot and think, oh, he'll be, like, an important, especially given his the, the law that he laid out. He'll be important. Oh, the uh, time he's... we're spending about him and with him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. We should probably clarify. So we've been talking a lot, a lot of things and stuff. I'd be curious what everyone's guess in chat would have been as to where we are at this point, uh, we're half an hour into the film. Yep. It's like, how did... Nothing's happened. <laughs> Damn. 
But, um, yeah, this film's pacing is notoriously terrible in terms of, like, it takes ages for nothing to happen, and then suddenly loads of things happen in a matter of, like, five minutes. Yes, it is a very bizarre case of simultaneously monotonous pacing and rapid-fire pacing. Yeah, you have those, um, those, those little... The, those info dumps, you get the, the lore dumps and the, the exposition dumps. They just happen in these bursts. You don't slowly but surely learn in a natural and organic way about this world Zack Snyder has created, no. stolen uh, from everything else. You just, you get these dumps. Like, oh, this is a scene where the robot just weirdly tells this whole story about a princess to the little girl while he's... At the river. Also, then he goes you get, the whole thing. Because it's just so bad, you get everything you need to know what's coming, right? So the guys earlier said, these robots, they fought like hell for the royal bloodline. The second the king was killed, they dropped their weapons. Like, okay. Yeah. And then yeah. he says, you remind me of the daughter of the bloodline, random girl I'm talking to. And she was great. And, and she was going to bring peace to the world. And so at this point, you're like, oh, so the girl is going to be threatened in some way, and the robot's going to save her. That's the that's implication you'd assume, but yes. The more relevant part would be, that's going to happen later in the film. Like, that'll, <laughs> that'll be like a second act, low point, kind of big reveal moment. That's, that's going to happen after a whole bunch more character and story happens. This yeah. is uh, this is called foreshadowing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's barely foreshadowing. Uh, no, well, this, is, this foreshadowing. is like when this That's is like when I'm the doing. pitcher in the middle of the baseball diamond when when he when he reaches his arm back with the ball in it that foreshadows that he's going to throw the ball. Yes. Uh, so the village are talking about how they need to yield entirely to this enormous space colony because they've got no fucking chance of fighting against them, and uh, our main character is annoyed at everyone for that. I find that funny. I don't know what they're gonna do. What exactly is she mad at them for? She's like, wow, you guys are just giving up, and it's like... What the can they mount? They have no weapons. <laughs> they have farmers vehicles. against space Nazis. What are they supposed to do? And, uh... She, so she's going to leave, and then her totally not dad character is like, well, maybe we could fight. And then she's like, what? And he's like, not just us, but other people too. And the short vision of this is she's like, okay, I'll go recruit a bunch of people to join us in a fight against them. And already it's just like, what do you, what, what do you mean? It doesn't matter. What, who are you going to hire? This isn't... How do you think this is going to work? You bring in a whole bunch of mercenaries and bounty hunters... And tell them to kill all of the motherland people when they come and try to get their bushels. <laughs> what do you think happens <laughs> then, even if you're successful? It's like, okay, so I I I accept uh checks. Um <laughs> <laughs> just I want I want much money for this. You, they they're like, what happened to uh, you know, sector three three seven people go in to get the farmers' grain stuff? It's like they all got killed. It's like, oh. Okay, I guess uh, we send more. more people yeah. <laughs> You know, what what weapon do they, do they have? There's like a bunch of random stuff. I don't even think, this is what I mean, I don't even know how they would necessarily believe they would win. When you've got a ship in orbit above the planet, and you're like, yeah, well, if you come down here, we'll beat you. It's like, what makes you think they don't have a weapon that would wipe the farm off the face of the fucking planet? I mean, you figure that they might have, like, orbital, you know, bombardment yeah. cannons or something. Or Which just a rocket. Just, well, we know that they do because we see them use later in the film. It would be yeah. weird if they didn't, right? Like, Remember, it would be weird if, they didn't. if you're building a, a, a world, if you're world building, if you've got your sci-fi world, if the people can cross the galaxy to get to you, they can obliterate you without having to even try. Well, and so at that point, you need to create reasons for them to go on the ground. Like, maybe it's a heavily yeah. populated area with civilians that they don't want to just indiscriminately blow up. So they have to go, but then the problem is again when you've got them as just space Nazis, they're like, well, yeah, I mean they're probably just gonna use those orbital cannons and blow everything up. So anyway, Which they do later, yeah, we'll get to they that. do later in the film, uh, yeah. yeah. The soldiers decide it's raping time, and they start raping all over the place. Um, that's their thing. They really want to rape this girl. All of them really want to rape this and girl. Uh, not to, like, it gets weird trying to help fix scenes like this, because, you know, you're just like, eh. but having them all just randomly decide in the middle of sort of everything functioning as normal, being like, let's just rape, and then they'll go, yeah, let's do some rape, let's go. So it's like, what you usually do is you set it so that, like, these guys are already at odds with the, the villagers, they already know the power differential, they're trying to make sure they stay in line, 
And maybe you have like a late night festivities. People try to get a bit drunk, and then one of the soldiers gets too handsy. A girl slaps him, and then he punches her or something, and grabs her, and just is like, "Fuck yeah. you!" You're, you know, that sort of development. It could be like a misunderstanding, sort of, where he's just being handsy, and then maybe she pushes him away, and maybe he trips and hits his head on something. You could do that, yeah. Or, but I guess if you're, if from the onset, your goal is to make the empire and the imperial soldiers all horrifically evil then you can just do whatever. Fuck it. It doesn't matter, right? You just it, it doesn't matter. Well, you don't it, have to be clever or crafty or anything. It's you one of the things I've seen people around. complaining about. It's just like, God, these bad guys are so lame. They're just, it's like, because it, this is impetus for the story to now be pushed forward again. It's like, oh, they're going to do a rape and she's going to stop him. Right. Okay. And in, and in a way, it's just like, well, shouldn't she? And you're like, no, it's not that. It's just that it's so boring. It's, it's, you didn't make anything interesting happen. It's like, they're really evil, and so let's stop them because they're evil. It's like, yep, that's that's that. You know, like, are these human characters? It's like, in theory, we'll see. In th yeah, in, in theory, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, there's one, the one good soldier tries to stop them, but then he gets strung up and stopped, and then they're like, we're going to make you watch, which is just... Again, I'm just like, make you Wah. watch our rape because you didn't want us to rape her. So while we rape her, you have to watch all of us rape her. Yeah, and so begins the insanely hefty amount of slow mo because we have our first fight where she takes. Well, wait, them all no, out. you need to you remember takes, that the main, the main character is like, oh, am I going to leave or am I going to stop this horrific crime? Like they have a moment there of what's she going to do? It's like, what are you? <laughs> I didn't Is even entertain that. Away? I was just like, like she's what? obviously gonna. Of course, she's yeah. gonna stop this horrific crime. Oh, it sucks. She, so she, so she picks up an axe, a yeah. little hand axe, little little, little yeah. old hand axe, and um, they've got basically. Well, there's like ten or so soldiers in a barn, and they have guns and things, and a hostage, uh, and and she she beats him. Yeah, with a lot of remember, a lot of slow mo, <clears throat> a lot of. She really takes a good long time well. to beat him in our time. Well, unfortunately, a lot of it isn't, uh, quote unquote, what I would call like outsmarting or skill based. A lot of it is strength related. And um, it's just she outvolts them. Overpowers much larger men, and the amount of just, unfortunately, a lot of them just didn't have their guns. Well, a lot of them don't, and a lot of them also do. <laughs> but a few of them do. A lot do. of them do, a just them don't just fucking do, yeah. aim just, properly. Yeah, they just don't shoot her. They do things like closing the eye. It's a really shitty, horrifically bad fight scene, and it's full of slow-mo, and we establish right off the bat that our protagonist has insane levels of plot armor. It's really shitty, really boring. It takes a long time. Nothing about it's believable, and I hate it. Two guys come at it, one from each end to slam down on her, and she blocks both of them with her arms, and it's just like... Uh, okay. <laughs> like, sure, sure she did. She get her ass kicked so hard, and it's like, yeah, but she's been trained, so have they. Yeah, also, they've got the same training much bigger. They're also much bigger. This is ring you can't... Like, she needed to be a bigger gal, that's the, for me to believe this. Yeah, uh, exactly. Or, you need to do different, like, fighting. You need to... You need to leverage her strengths. Yeah, she sets up a bunch of traps, kills a few of them over well, again, with the rifle. I, I and don't know. You know, the, the archetypal one is Black Widow does like a lot of grappling and agility. That's like her thing. Uses the, their strength against well, them. Well, she has slow mo. Yeah, uses... yeah, that's true. She has the Ooh. power of slow mo. It's like Max Payne. She can, you know, bullet time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Zach does a lot of, uh, as I mentioned on our coverage with uh, Cinematic Venom, uh, a lot of slow mo within slow mo. It's it's pretty cringe, actually. It's uh, oh, that's like a super duper power. That's yeah. like an ultimate in Overwatch. Mm -hmm. It's it's I it, I just don't like he's he's like the worst. I think the slow mo. It starts like when she tosses one of the guys, he's in slow mo, and then it goes super slow mo. And it's like, what did you think? Like it was already bad enough. With the slow mo, I don't need more. Unless you really linger on the plot armor, yeah. And uh, I think that there's just this misunderstanding from Zach as to why we have slow mo at all. I get the slowing down of a cool bit of imagery, but that's only what he does. And even then, sometimes it's not cool imagery at all. It's just something happening. Um, but we we were talking about it with uh, the shot of Eowyn in Lord of the Rings. But like, there, there's times where you slow down so that we can actually absorb the emotion of the moment. Understanding the character, how they feel, uh, taking in for a moment longer than what could be done. 
in real time how everything is playing out. But this shot, you can't even see her face, and he's just doing like a backflip onto the floor. And like I think the most the reason why he had the slow mo is because he kicks up some sand or whatever that is, and it just looks kind of huh. Look, that's all isn't that slow. Oh wow. Yeah, I'll slow down. You wouldn't so have noticed that in walk. real time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, dude, the guy is a guy who comes down with it. Slow mo is the cool button. And two, you can just press it whenever you want. Guy comes down with her two arms with an axe, full power, and she stops it with one arm. It's not gonna happen. No, she didn't. That's not gonna happen. No, she doesn't. She doesn't do it. She's dead. Don't <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, she kills. Uh, well, everyone dies except for main bad man, who's main like, bad guy. I'm gonna shoot this innocent lady if you guys carry on, which is just like. <laughs> God, she's so evil. <laughs> like, I was gonna rape it, but now I'll use her as a meat shield. Um, and then the robot comes in. Here he is. He's like, oh, hey guys, what's going on? And picks up a rifle. And maybe this is the only thing I actually kind of think is okay in the whole movie, but very specifically, the fact that he nails the shot while not even aiming the gun, like, in a conventional way. Yeah, because yeah, he's a robot. Yeah, that was kind of neat. Yeah, able to figure it out. Um, but yeah, of that's course. that's the war. But the thing that's that the we payoff. said would maybe happen at like the the end of the movie happens five minutes after it was set up. Yeah, here it is. He's already done. He's dead. And then um, he runs away. <laughs> well, I say the the issue that I have with a robot here in the scene is that he walks into a barn with no context. There's nope. like ten <laughs> soldiers on the ground, either dead or wounded. A villager. And a live soldier saying, you need to kill them. They took out all of the men. Yeah. And the robot kills him instead? With well, no Rags context. explained it. He believes that she, he, he's reminded of the bloodline girl, and he protects the royal family above everyone else. There you go. Yeah. Oh, uh, we never see him. We, we don't see him until the end of the movie, by the way. He's out. The yeah, robot's he's gone, gone now. Uh, it's funny because... So the, 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 the good soldierman who tried to stop the bad soldierman. He's, he's also not in the rest. Because you were, you were like, yeah. when you saw this, you were like, oh, so the robot's going to be a member of the team. It's like, well, yeah. probably, but not for the rest <laughs> of this you, movie. You think not that we're this, setting maybe. up characters. We're setting up characters yeah. is what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. like, no. No, <laughs> he just runs off. This is all basically just a plot event that is the reason why we have our collecting Pokemon card adventure. Yeah. Except and he's not it. one of the Pokemon that they're collecting. He's nope. just yeah. out. I'm sure he'll be here in Why? part two, maybe, when they defend oh, the yeah, village. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe, he'll be in the direct, maybe he'll be in the director's cut. Maybe he went on a side quest. That you Zach can only, only see had uh, Anthony cut. Hopkins for uh, an afternoon, but, so he recorded his lines and couldn't use them. That's what I mean. Like, Anthony Hopkins wouldn't have been on set. He would just be recording the lines in the booth. <clears throat> yeah, he has no so, idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could get him for as, the whole movie if you wanted to. You know, it wouldn't be any problem for him, because it probably only took him a few days to record his lines, if that. So, uh, the plan is, the Mother World are gonna return, we're gonna collect a bunch of bounty hunters slash rebels to defend this village for when they come back. Which is hyper-retarded. Why would you assume that the, the, that would be enough? We, got, we went through all the orbital ways they can do it, the more reinforcements they'll send. Overwhelming forces are not gonna work, you're adapting more likely stealing stories that have existed before that have these premises that have different mechanics and reasons for why this is the way the story uh, shakes out. This doesn't work. The mother world will destroy you every single time. Unless, of course, you had like hyper plot armor and blew them all up inexplicably in some crazy yeah, battle you'd sequence. you need some hyper plot armor for that. Yeah, something crazy. But anyway, that's the plan. We're gonna go get. We're gonna recruit some people, and our only lead is that uh, Stephen, when he sold the grain, uh, the guy he was talking to had uh, dealings with the blood axes, and we'd like to go and get the blood axes to defend us. Of course, the main question you might have is like, why the fuck would the blood axes defend you? Like a random, they're like, they're, they they're the primary this? rebellion source, like like the faction against the main villains, and you want them to fight them directly, openly for one farming village. Why? Why would they do that? Why would anyone do that? They wouldn't. Yeah, especially it's, when it's uh, they explicitly cannot pay people. They can only give them grain at best. And that's not even grain they have. That's grain they'll have in the future. So, <laughs> this is all very stupid. And uh, yeah, they, they camp out for the night because they're on their journey, the little adventure. They've got their fellowship of two people now. And uh, he's like, so uh, what, what are they going to do to us, do you think? Like, if, you know, if all this goes wrong, what would the mother will do? And she just gets locked into a very long, I'm going to explain my entire fucking backstory to yeah. you now. Next exposition uh, dump. Again. Next exposition dump. 
Which I his is a uh, terrible slow mo fight scene in between the last exposition dump to yeah. really change it up. Her home world was raised by the mother world when she was like a little fleam, and they they met the main evil man who, well, she did, uh, and he was impressed with her because he put her gun to his face and she pulled the trigger. It was like, oh wow, you've, you've got reason. you've got spunk, little girl. And uh, yeah, I don't know why. I, I I've talked to a few people about it. I don't, uh, nobody's got any ideas on what the fuck we're, spo we're supposed to interpret about that. If it jammed, if he knew it wasn't loaded, if it was, the safety was on, I have no idea. Uh, I don't maybe know. he just I wanted thought... to die. Yeah, I got nothing. I have no clue. I've got no clue. So yeah, um, obviously he he then raised her as his own and taught her that love is weakness and that you should never be nice because niceness is bad. And then she fell in love with some guy, and then that guy died in a fight, and she said she stopped, She didn't really understand the meaning of all of this anymore, and lost her investment in fighting. That's that. Even though after that, she went and fought more. Well, yeah, she, they show her planting the flag, and then she's like... Charging forward and yelling and saying, let's go! Yeah, man. I raised the banner for the very people that murdered my entire family. And it's like, yeah... Yeah, why'd you do that? Yeah, why did you do that? What's up with that? <laughs> oh, and there's a big slow-mo shot of her <clears throat> waving the flag as well. Oh, so cool. It's just so cool. Yeah, she, yeah it is it's really cool. You guys should have been there to see it. It was really cool. Just just yeah. FYI, that's that's all we really have to say about all that. We are 50 minutes in now. Yep. Like, this, you can, I mean, I, <laughs> this is definitely I mean, the, the Reader's thing. Digest here's version thing, of how terrible guys. this movie is. I feel like you we covered most of the things that matter. We're moving fast, but it was painfully slow. Painfully slow, yeah. So they arrive at the place where they're going to meet their, their contact, and just as they arrive, he is captured by bounty hunters outside of the saloon or whatever this fucking place is. And, and Steve was like, oh no, that's our contact. And... Oh, well. Because this is written like absolute crap, she says, hmm, did the blood axes give you any other way to contact them other than through this guy? And Steven's like, um, yeah, uh, they told me that they are sheltered by King Sharan, oh no, King Levitica on planet Sharan, so we'll have to go there. And it's like, sorry. Oh. The rebel team told you who is sheltering them and where when you'd met them for the first time and provided them some grain. Wow. That's I'm glad that we're establishing the this is so that every faction is retarded in this world. So horribly written. It's like, number one, they would never tell you that. Otherwise, they were just hyper-retarded. Two, like, why didn't you bring this up before? That's, that's more useful information that than go and talk to this guy. That that would be the, the, the direct instead of the through a middleman. Like it's fucking crazy. And he's just like, Yeah, no, I haven't really got any more information except exactly where they are. That's about all I have. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then um it's so awkward because the guy's getting dragged away. And they just walk they past just him. him. <laughs> they leave him to his fate. They're like, Well, you have no usefulness yeah, to Yeah, he us. was gonna help us, but well, he got you caught, know, he I guess. Has, it's so he funny because massive Usefulness to the to the plot for the bad guys though. Yeah, and he's also he's also he'd be invested in the um sort of the 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 cause. Yeah, but oh well, uh, whatever. But, yeah, it, I think uh, for you, you were like, oh, what kind of action scene are we gonna get to save him? And they just walk past him. And they just walk <laughs> past him, and I'm like, yeah, that oh, don't give a shit. I guess that don't like, care. Oh, well, plan yeah. B. They don't give a fuck. Bye. Uh, yeah, they say like before we go visit your rebel friends, we need to get General Titus and. A genius plan for finding General Titus, who I think all we know about him is that he led a rebellion against the Mother Will despite being one of their generals, and then he was disgraced and <laughs> he, he was sent, I guess, to Roman planet to be uh, in the Gladiator. He was sent yeah. to Gladiator planet. It's, um, oh, and then, yeah, uh, so just keep all that in mind. We get, they walk into a cantina like place, and then we get what feels like one to one choice of shots. With Star Wars, yeah. like this just feels like a blatant ripoff. It's just like, look at that alien. Look at this alien. Look at this alien. Look at this alien. And it's yeah. just like when but, when TFA it, does this, we make fun of them. But at least TFA is a part of the same series, so it, you can treat it as though it's reverence and be yeah. like, look. Whereas in this case, they do it, and then they're like, oh, what's better than Disney? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> what? what? And it's so overtly alien, and yet within, like, it's so close to their little settlement. 
And you're just like, damn. Yeah. Um, and also in keeping in keeping with Star Wars, uh, especially Disney Star Wars, um, no aliens join their team. Actually, they're all people. They're nope, all humans. No aliens. Oh yeah, you're no right. aliens. To give a, a better understanding of what we're trying to get at as well, you know, Luke and his family and stuff, they, there's loads of things that uh, are what you would call maybe old age or archaic like tech or approaches, but there's also loads of updated stuff. It's like a big... It feels like advanced old. Like, uh, it's, it's like we're not going to of... rebuild the building because that's just not yeah. feasible to rebuild the whole building, but we well, can we're gonna install... use droids and stuff. Yeah, we're we're gonna use we can buy a droid and they could use droids in the bar, or we can buy we some nice car, TVs. You know, you know? Okay. like if you go Radio. to houses that are built in the yeah, 19, like the tens or twenties, they'll have electricity. Mm -hmm. They they've they've put in gas lines and electricity want lines and stuff like that. You know, but in this case, it is just like a Viking village that looks like it's from five hundred years ago. Well, much further than that, actually, if it's a Viking village. It looks old. Very, 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 very old. But not aged. It looks old, but like it was recently built. Except it's a crazy sci-fi world with massive spaceships and aliens and crazy tech. Um, it's bizarre. Is what it's it like is. a pair of jeans, and they make them where the like knees are worn off. Yeah, deliberately. Except not even that. They're just pristine, like, jeans. Except they're... <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just bizarre. It's so strange. Then we introduce Rapey Pigman, who's, uh... Mm -hmm. Wait, more rape... more rapers? Oh, no. Yeah, but, but throw a bit more in, and, uh... Oh, my goodness. He's like, I want to sex Steven. And then she's like, no. And then... The gay rapist, very he progressive. fucking pulls out a knife to her neck in this what I assume is a bar where you're not allowed to just randomly well, threaten people like that. I presume it's just, it's just that he doesn't like you. I don't like you either, kind of. They're doing that bit, you know? Well, you I'm know, just, it's now, uh, conflict. so much better here. here. Because, yes, yeah, she, yeah, she yeah. beats him up and then he's like, oh, you rascally rabbit, I'm, I'll am i get you, and, and leaves. And uh, when he's left, she's like, okay, everyone listen up. Does anyone know where General Titus is? <laughs> Which... Like, what the fuck, man? What like, what? Fuck it, Obi-Wan, when he needed what he needed, he was, like, talking to specific people and trying to move around. Like, not, you don't just announce, you're already, like, in potential trouble. He's someone you're not even allowed to, like, fucking associate with necessarily, but whatever. She's cr crazy clever, and then it's just some fucking alien just goes, I know where General Titus is. <laughs> Like oh good, but you just happened to know That's this. Really good. This he was super That's useful. Helpful that he's here at this bar and it was just there. Yeah, tell him this. Of That's course, good. he knows where General Titus is, and he explains. This is he's writing on... is easy. Right, writing stories is so easy. easy. What? So why easy. do you two guys? What? How come you guys say that it's hard? It's really easy. And so, uh, yeah, he's on Roman planet. You got to go to Roman planet to get it. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, well, I guess we'll head there. But then Pigman comes back, and now he's got mercenaries with him. Oh, no, they've right. got guns. So, really, it's a remix on the cantina, because after the guy got his arm chopped off, they just went back to playing the music here. They went back to playing the music, and then we got a fight scene. Well, in A New Hope, they call the cops. That's right, they do. They call the they call, the, they call the stormtroopers like, dude, this guy came in here with like a weird laser sword or whatever, and he cut off this dude's arm. That's not cool. I'm gonna call the police, and then and the police show up looking for him. Blood goes places, but don't worry, the R8 vision yeah, of this will have blood. Vikings. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so they all miss every single shot except the ones that hit the wooden table she uses as a shield against these plasma weapons, which works. And they just don't go through. Um, it's so weird. Yeah, it, it's it's actually crazy. They plasma weapons very a tiny thin coffee table. Very explicitly show us that the wood uh, is a good strong shield against plasma. It's like okay, which uh, is weird because even so. like the weakest of bullets will go through thin we'll go layers through wood. of wood. Yeah, yeah. no and wood these is sci-fi guns. Yeah, and so they all die. Uh, there's one left that might just get our main character, but then uh, Sons of Anarchy Man shoots him, and you're like, oh my god. Yeah. And uh, he's oh, like, look, I heard you're guy. looking for a pilot in this cantina. <laughs> I can help you. I'm a pilot. I made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. <laughs> and you might think my ship's a piece of junk, but it's actually really great and real fast. Um this fucking character is such a, like, it, it, it's so bad on the part of the writer. And it's so confusing. I thought it was terrible writing first time around, but it turns out it's 
terrible characterization it's on the part of our main characters. Yeah. It's um, he basically says, "I'm not a mercenary. I'm an opportunist. I just do whatever's best benefiting me." And uh, when we when we walk into this place, we see that he's getting paid off by the bounty hunters who are searching for any information on the blood axes, right? So you could assume some form of an alignment there. And then he's like, I can help you guys. You're, uh, you know, you're doing something for a cause, right? And I think she just, I think Steven says, uh, we're, we're just, we're just farmers. And then she says, we're organizing a fucking thing to take on the mother we're world and free our, yeah. and it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, how about you shut the fuck how up, is, woman? How is Steven the one that's like much more, you know, savvy with all of this? What he's, he's <laughs> displaying common sense. Yeah. And she's just like. We are here to make a rebellion. Who knows where the general is of the rebellion that we can go visit to make a rebellion? And so he's, Do you uh, know, he says he'll uh, he'll he'll join and help him. And then they're like, well, but you know, payment, I guess. And he's like, pay me what you will. And and it's the like, main character doesn't think, hmm, that's really sus. That's super uh, sus. You don't um, want anything. Like I said, first time through, I was just like, well, that was terribly written. But if it, uh, the thing about it is, it's, it's, it's fiction. If I met someone who did this in real life, I wouldn't trust them because I'd be like, you're doing something that costs you for no reason, at least from what I can tell. What's going on? What's the motive? Wait, wait, are you talking about the guy who literally says I'm an opportunist? You're talking about that guy, right? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I would think uh, I'm an The guy who literally says I'm just an opportunist. Hmm. And she tells him everything? Yep. Okay, that's interesting. All right, fair enough. I don't I don't see what the and even is. Steven's like, you're fucking what are you doing? Like <laughs> cuz he's like it's so funny watching this over and talking about it. He is easily the best character because there's something else he's gonna do that puts him above everyone else uh, a bit it's later. It's like he's normal. Yeah. In this crazy world filled yeah. with rumors, he's a he's normal guy. He's kind of our normal character, which elevates yeah. him far above all the rest of the Zack Snyder characters. He's just some guy. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. But yeah, they've got a new member of the team now, and it it just came out of nowhere, and it's super suspicious, but fine. Kai. Kai the pilot. Here he comes. This is this is awesome. Sure. And Cora and Kai and Farmer Man. Then we get villain scene where uh Francis oh, is really told good. that they're gonna be meeting up with the bounty hunters that captured that guy. And then he's like, Yeah, okay, I'll meet up with them, and then he fucks an octopus thing. I don't uh I don't know why they well, this is even here. that he allows the octopus to fuck him. I don't know. Same diff. I'm not. I'm not being more specific. I'm sorry if that's upsetting to you. I just wanted to get positive. No, no, it's, it's it. fine. I just wanted to just you know make sure. Didn't look very good too. Want... The CG on it, like it. No, it actually looked quite bad. Incorporate with him very well. Um, pointless scene doesn't actually add anything at all that we don't get from later parts, and it, I I don't know if they're trying to be like, look at him, look at him. He has sex with aliens. Like okay. I don't, I don't know what to do with that. I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I legitimately don't know. I don't know what I'm meant to make of it. What am I supposed to think? Yeah, what do you want from me, me, Zach? Isn't that weird? It's just weird. You know? Then, then we get our no, next disjointed scene that's been stapled into the movie because that's what we get now for the next, like, three scenes, major moments right. in this film. First is a guy called Tarak, who they come here to buy, but they have no money. Well, there. Well, that's the problem we got there. No that's, the, in it, you that's, know? that's the it's first like, hitch in that plan. <laughs> so, uh, but then his slave Maybe they were Oda promised them grain later. They think all grain is a pathway yeah. to all of their <laughs> problem solutions. Is like, oh, we 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 can give you some grain. It's it's in like ten a, weeks maybe the shittiest give you some grain. the shittiest video game, the shittiest open world RPG. We're like, I need this guy, and then the slave owner's like, well, you gotta give me money. They're like we don't have any. He goes, no money. Well, all right. I'm I'm a gambler. I like gambling. So, if he can tame the fucking mythical beast just outside, then you can take him. If he fails, you're all my slaves. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's an what interesting the? um. Uh, 
It, it's definitely a moment of like whether or not our quote unquote leader agrees to this being lady person. I feel like if I were there, I'd be like, oh, I, I'm not involved in this. You I'm guys not with can, him. Yeah. I'm not with. I'm not with him. I'm not actually up. For you guys sale can gamble myself. if you want, but I'll just watch. I, I don't know what the fuck's yeah. going on, really. Um. <coughs> yeah. And so this guy's like, yeah, I'll, I'll tame I'm sorry, the beast. Wait, wait, before you go on, just to remind me, because I'm, why do they really want this Tarek guy? <laughs> I've seen the film twice, and I, I don't know. I can't remember. Like. <laughs> He's... No, there, there's got to be a reason. No, there probably is. I, I think I missed the line. That's all I've got. Because uh, I actually don't have. I, I can't remember why they want this. Why they travel specifically to this planet to get this guy? Because it's at this point of the story where I'm going. No, 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 no. You, you don't need to be collecting Pokemon people to add to your party to win the championship. No, no. You you have to like assemble an entire army and artillery in like a space fleet in order to defend yourself. Or you, you can just like get, run away. Like, five super cool edgy people. Yeah, or or you run away and you fuck off and never come back. But I think the movies the, it, it was at this point I think that I realized the movie wanted me to think that if they collect like five edgy special characters that they could stop the enemy army magnificent 7 style. Yeah, but that's, I was about to say, Seven that Samurai. The lack of media literacy that you didn't realize that this is like Seven Samurai. Yeah. You're supposed to understand. Why, that's right. But, it, but and Seven that, Samurai that and Magnificent good. Seven work because it's some skilled gunslingers against like a, a larger but relatively small scale force of baddies. Wait, not that a Galactic Empire? Not, not massive, but it wasn't Galactic actually. Galactic Empire that's massively technologically hmm. superior? Yeah. Yeah, like, weird. like a. Like, I don't know what they're going to do against a spaceship, you know? But I, I guess their plan is that... Well, wow. we I see what I one character manages to do against a spaceship. I yeah. guess. Pretty neat. Yeah, it is pretty so, neat. So, um, yeah, he's got to tame it, and he talks to the animal about how we're both enslaved, we both want to be free, and that we both fear ourselves. And apparently this animal understands all of this. <laughs> and yeah, they, it's like a black... It's a black griffin... It's, it's a griffin. Yeah, it's a hippogriff, as people have been comparing. It's kind of like the creature in yeah, Harry it's, Potter. Um, it's just, it's just a griffin. It's got a eagle head and like a horse lion body and some wings, and it's covered in feathers. It's, it's just a griffin. It's, yeah, it's, it's just a it, black it, griffin. And it, again, once again, feels just like stuff. Like Zach is just like, yeah, throw that in. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. it feels like just some like <clears throat> young adult kids adventure story where you just have a bunch of magical, fantastical things thrown into the world, and and that's it. It feels Yay, like a stuff. 12 year old wrote this. It, it feels like a 12 year old story come to life. A 12 year old's daydream made manifest somehow, and then Netflix purchased it. Um, they have a very weird, like, he wraps a rope around its beak, and that's enough for it, him to remain attached to it when it starts to fly away, which feels really fucking weird. And yeah. Like, um, the leverage you would have would be so incredibly inefficient, and there's no saddle. There's, he's just, that's, that's enough, apparently. Yeah, he's just sitting on him. He's just sitting on the guy the, on the griffin as it flies around, and he stays on it because, you yep. know, just don't think about it. Isn't it cool that he's riding on the griffin? This character we don't know anything about on this creature at this place. Well, I suppose notable uh, part of it is that the the creature wants him off as much as it can. It doesn't do a great yeah. job of it, but it does at one point ram into a wall that does knock him off. And then he it jumps rams and tries itself to get away. into the wall to yeah. try to yeah. get him off. And of it was, it was of really just... weirdly framed as well. He like looks at it like, oh my god, what's that? And yeah, then the, like the slow mo. Like, oh my god, what's that? And then and it's, it's just a wall. wall. <laughs> yeah, they have this the lingering slow motion scene where the griffin is looking over to the left, like, oh my gosh, what's that over there? And it's, it's a just. Wall. It's just a rock wall. Even he has the. Because they're the, flying through a canyon and it's camera... just a rock wall. Tightens up on Tarak as well, realizing too. He's like, "Oh no, that thing he... that it spotted—that's gonna fuck us up now." And it's just the same thing that's been in this whole environment. Yeah, I expected him to turn so over. We'll... And there'd be like a spaceship. Well, or, you know what it is. Like a whole maybe, group of people. Or maybe in the extended animal? version, it will be looking at something specific. Oh yeah, yeah. The the, ah, the weird rock right. kamikaze is just a placeholder. Mm. That makes sense. That makes sense. You because gotta what check we out the Justice is Scar edition out next year Ooh. because it because instead of like to just spinning around or, or or turning upside down in the air or anything like that it just it, it just like 
it like rams itself into yeah. the canyon wall doesn't even to the ram wall. effectively right like it, it rams awkwardly because it mainly is hurting itself yeah, when it doesn't it's have to weird. it could hurt him much more by just aiming better so it, it makes Terak seem like an animal abuser because the animal <laughs> is so desperate now to get this creature this weird creature <laughs> off of its back that it is willing to hurt itself in order to do that well, and then we get the to get back on these slow mos. Weird considering the, the that American it, Indian vibes are going for, but whatever. It's super slow mos after the slow mo. Um, yep. It's he thinks just... it's a really good shot, and it's not that interesting. No, no. Wait, do you wait? You disagree? You don't? I just you don't I, think it's I, a I really think, cool shot. It's just not that interesting. But he's running slowly and jumping slowly onto yeah, the, the thing onto the. There. It's weird. It's it's actually a lot of this movie is kind of difficult to explain in words how dumb it is because yeah. it's it's so non like it's so unceremonious and mundane. A lot of the things that happen, they're just really stupid. Well, I mentioned so when you describe them, they don't seem as stupid as they really are. I mentioned the disconnection, but I feel like anybody who was listening to us maybe left the video going and went to the toilet or something, came back, and now we're talking about it. They'd be like, "Wait, what the fu what movie are you talking about?" We're like. <laughs> yeah, Rebel Moon. Um, yeah, this is still Rebel Moon. This it's is the, the next movie. chapter in Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, and mm -hmm. it's it, this is the part where the uh, the Indian guy jumps on the hippogriff on the desert planet that they go to, uh, so he could become a part of the team. Th that this is a part. This is the next part. This is where the story was leading. This is an intuitive place. That, yeah, yeah. Because if they if they come back the... from the bathroom, they'll know what we're talking about. This begins the incredibly bizarre portion of this film. Oh! oh he said incredibly so. bizarre, no, not just regularly right. yeah. bizarre. No, More you're so. actually right. After the, the first act is shitty Star Wars, and then it turns into a shitty Farscape episode. Well, it's just, it's, it's just, thus begins the section of recruiting a bunch of people in these incredibly disconnected moments that don't advance the plot. They're all like short they're films. Like, yeah, like yeah, episodes like, of a TV show short. that are crammed together. Yeah, that was made by four or five plot. different people, but all of them were Zack Snyder. I just throw it together, and then after we recruit them, they don't say anything for a while. Like each character that gets yeah, recruited they disappear. In the yeah, it's they like just, they have no perspective on anything that's happening. They're there. This is oh, this reminds me of the dwarves in the Battle of the Five Armies, where in the first two movies of the trilogy, the dwarves are like they're around kind of all the time, sort of, and then in the third movie, they basically just have no screen time whatsoever and they just become an ambiguous group of dwarves and that they stop getting any characterization or lines because i mean this film is it, it is plot, so baby. devoid of character it's so devoid of character it's kind of unbelievable like this guy gets recruited and i wouldn't be surprised if he had three lines of dialogue for the rest of the film uh unironically i think that's true i i legitimately it think might, he may have three, three lines maybe and I'm, I'm not saying three to be like dramatic i mean i i legitimately think that he he, he maybe says like three things for the rest that's of the a film. lot compare Otherwise, it to titus and there. nemesis they get yeah. like nothing <laughs> nemesis gets like nothing i think titus gets one speech i was looking forward to revealing yeah. her name oh yeah <laughs> I remember it because it's so stupid but yeah, they've re they, this guy, he's tamed the griffin. Because, yeah, the griffin sma slams into the rock wall, oh, and, and he falls off, and then he runs down it, because on. the griffin didn't leave. The griffin, like, flew along the wall yep. in a way that he could... If he flew elsewhere, he would have been stuck and screwed. Yeah, had he not gone as fast as it forward fly. left, so he, if weird. he'd done every other direction, the guy would be dead. Yep, but fortunately he didn't. So good for him, and he's tamed him. <laughs> and then he, and then he's like, "Yeah, tamed him. Now I'm gonna leave him in the hands of you abusive like guys. I'm just gonna leave, leave this tamed Griffin with you bad people." Well, well yeah. actually, like, we don't know that they're bad people, do we? Well, they're, they're guess, slave like, owners, rags. <laughs> well, well, he he's enslaved because of this massive debt that he's incurred for something against this guy. I don't know the nature, like, I mean, the the film wants you to believe these guys are scum. Oh yeah, like, it frames them as terrible, horrible people, but actually it doesn't Well, because I was even going to say, actually are. the exchange doesn't even make sense. Uh, he must not have owed you very much if it can be paid off by taming this animal, like because one animal. the so value like of having someone credits who will just work for you, like, explicitly, you know, indefinitely, but however long they got him from, that's worth a lot. 
compared to just willing to do it. He's just willing to do it too. And He's of course, not gonna try the to arrangement doesn't anything. even really make sense. You tamed it, therefore we can like use chill it. Out with it. That's yeah, how and... it works with animals. Somebody else tames it. You can just effortlessly make that animal do whatever you want. Well, why couldn't he get him to do it anyway? He was his slave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, go and tame him. Why would that make a deal to do that? He's like, yeah, the if he could do a thing did. that I could have had him do anyway, then I'll give him up to you. It's like, what? Yeah, this is like, I, I need you to wash yeah, those it. dishes over there, and then we're then and then you could go. I like, just well, find it so just awkward. Tell him to do it. That, as far as the film is concerned, these guys suck because they're like slave owners. Um. And, and then he's like, all right, I'll leave this griffin that I bonded with in this magical moment where I'm like a good animal man who, like, it cares which he about animals. In tune with nature. I, no, which he isn't. I, I'm going to leave him with you evil guys. Yeah, but that's where you're <laughs> wrong, because he knew that the, the creature was going to kill them all and run away. Yes, because that's what happens, is the, 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 the guy's like, all right, I'm going I'm to ride my griffin, and then it kills oh, him. Oh, jeez, it ain't working out. Oh, I got me. Yeah. And it kills and him by, like, like, stabbing him with all of his claws in his chest? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's and he watches like it and says, Atta girl. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. all right. Oh, oh gee, all right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this this guy just got killed by this griffin I just don't... horrifically. And now they're just probably going to shoot it dead. <laughs> probably. Probably. They're going to be yeah. like, holy shit, this thing is going to kill. Oh, shit, we got to kill really, it now. It's, it's, it's killing us. It's, it's not the outcome that you want. The griffin's done. You should have just yeah. flown off with the griffin. Why didn't he just leave? Yeah, he just fly off fly away. Don't Why, know. They came, yeah, they came back. They came back to the place, and he delivered the griffin to the guy. We get asked, like, why isn't it, why isn't it flying away in general? It can fly, and it doesn't want to be here. Why isn't it leaving? <laughs> like, why isn't it just leaving? Why doesn't it just go away? Yeah, because it, it could return? leave at any time. It, it has wings it, attached a, to it. It's a vengeful griffin. It wants to get revenge. Mm -hmm. I guess. But then why like, didn't nothing... it just? Kill well, it awkwardly walks around free. until it gets revenge. We're, yeah. we're awkwardly talking about this movie because this is a very strange movie to sort of recount because there's a thousand weird little bitty things that make no sense yeah. and they're all jammed together. Nothing in this movie makes any sense and it's confusing and it's weird and I don't know what's trying to be said. I have no idea what Zack Snyder thinks about Native Americans, but I, I, I think I should be offended, but I'm not sure. It's really weird. Enough of that. We're off to we're off to Dagus we're now. Off to Cyberpunk City. And I'm off to the toilet. I'll be right back. It's the yeah, Cobalt Mining the Planet city. where they mine cobalt, which is basically irrelevant to the thing that's going to happen here. Which I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, introducing Nemesis. Look at this character. <laughs> She's got a They're mysterious a past. She dresses in all black. She has a funny hat and two lightsabers. Yep. I just can't. <laughs> it's like I'm so uh, bored. It's so good. It's so goofy and lame. Why? And then, uh, you, you'd be like, oh, well, I mean, she seems interesting, right? And you're like, yeah, you'd think. You'd think. But you no, think you don't get anything on her except in this scene, I think. And then someone and else said, we'll like... Get it in, uh, we'll get it in episode part two. Well, yeah, I mean, the assumption is that she had a home planet and they were all killed, all of her family, by the evil mother world. That's probably going to be the fucking backstory for all of these people. Isn't that... That's yeah, that's the backstory for the fucking... Right. The pilot. Yeah. And exactly. that's obviously the backstory of the main character. Yep. It, <laughs> arguably, it's the backstory for Steven, because Modoc got killed. Yeah. It's so lame. And yeah, she's, uh, she's super mysterious, and they say, Hey, would you like to join us on our suicide mission for no reason at all? And before she can answer, yeah. we just <laughs> enter a different scene. It's, 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 like, it's literally <laughs> like entering a different <laughs> fucking movie. Oh, are we the next movie yet? Yeah. A humanoid oh, okay. spider lady. <laughs> yeah, suddenly a giant oh, yeah, spider that's tormenting weird... this village is suddenly... That's what's happening now. Yeah, we're at the episode where they go to the super industrial mining place in the ghetto, and there's a spider lady, and she's stolen a kid, and then there's a little... a weird Asian swordsman lady, and it's... It's like a new movie has begun. It really yeah, is. Because now we're, we're <clears throat> on this little uh, sequence for this character. We're on the next mission of the video game. Well, so yeah, into. That is not advancing the plot at all. Again, we, we can travel through this relatively fast because the summary of the motivation for Spider Queen is the Mother World have poisoned the air to the point where my eggs can no longer develop into my children. And so, since I can't have children, I'm going to steal other people's children to make all the mothers feel the same pain that I feel. Yeah, she's gonna. She kidnapped a kid, and she's gonna kill him. 
And then <laughs> like, Nemesis is like, no, this isn't right. And then they have the a sword fight. <laughs> yeah, she's it's it's the she says all of that and then our our new character is like, but that's mean. And then they fight. Yeah, and then they have a really poorly choreographed fight. Yeah, and uh, she does she barely wins. Nemesis seems yeah, to have yeah. a lot of trouble well, fighting yeah, this so spider Nemesis, lady with her sword. Nemesis is fighting, and everybody just sort of stands there and watches. There's a, there's there's a, a lot that's terrible. Movie. She doesn't there's, turn there's on her lightsabers until way later. That's right. But, yeah, but, she has like two little that. short swords, and then halfway through the fight, after she's really had a tough time, she turns the swords on, and they like electrify and red. Pose. She does a little pose. Yeah, they seem to be. Yeah. I think the idea is they're super hot. They're kind of like you know swords that are made of light almost. Like they're super hot and they can yeah. slash. Yeah. Seemingly have no drawbacks, mm -hmm. but everybody just stands and watches. Even though there's a child that's about to be killed by the spider, the only person who jumps in is Steve. Again, being the best character in the film, he yeah. jumps in and helps. Everybody just well, watches. And it's, yeah, it's fair to do an assessment kid... here. You have the child who is quite far away, big spider, giant target, who has many moments of being completely open. Steve does not have any weapons. Our main character has a gun. Pilot Man has a gun. I think. Uh, T Tarek doesn't have a gun, but at the same time, he's wrangled yeah, he's beasts, you know? Fighter. It's weird that he doesn't have a gun. Well, he's a strong fighter. I feel like yeah. a lot of other people here would have guns as well. This seems like one of those worlds where... Well, most of them do. Of That's kind of my point, is that none of them fucking use them. And instead, they just watch Steven desperately almost die defending this child while the, rescue the, kid. the assassin lady is struggling. She gets one of her arms, like, pierced by a spider leg or something. And you just yep, don't yeah, know what the her, fuck her is going on. The most yeah. we can gather as of later scenes is that uh, our hero was just... This was like a test to, to just watch what Nemesis can do. And she's like, oh yeah, that was I pretty good. Impressive. Care of the child? Nope. Care that there was a child in danger? It's pretty cringe. That's, uh, that's bad characterization is what that is. Very bad for all of them. At least yeah. Kai makes sense. He's actually a bad guy. So, yeah. you know, why would that's he kick? Cool. Bad guys don't care about the lives of children. We all know that. He's so. put his life on the line with no fighting experience whatsoever to try and yeah. help. He just does something virtuous while everyone else does nothing, despite being yep. able to have ended the fight easily and very quickly. And yeah, this mm -hmm. I think was in the trailer, her turning on her lightsabers and going woo 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 yeah. woo 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 and then doing a big circle around her for no reason at all. It is for mm -hmm. no reason. It's just to be cool. You know what's it's funny is, um, cool. if you look at the way they light up, it looks like the handles have lit up too. So I guess she does have metal arms, meaning that she could tolerate yeah, she a lot of cyborg heat. Yeah, arms. But like, it just she gets stabbed in the arm. It doesn't it, seem like, like a particularly goes... good design, though, that the handles become hot. No, that sounds uh, pretty stupid, honestly. Yeah, Maybe well, the blades are so short. They're custom made so that the the she can handle them, and no There's one else. No can. one like her. Yeah. Uh, they're they're a special assassination blades because she's an assassin. God, she's so fucking lame. But yeah, she kills she's... a spider. No, she's she very cool, Mahler. No, I will not allow it. No, what do you mean? She's very cool. I mean what I said. Fuck this lady. Fuck all these you characters. Can't. Rags. I don't. You know what? I don't like. I don't like Rebel Moon. I don't like it. What? But this is Zack Snyder is a visionary. I don't like visionaries now. That's what I've learned. Wow. I don't like <clears throat> he made me hate visionaries, X Night. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess that's done. There's a particularly funny part where at the end, uh, instead of being like shocked and disturbed at everything they've just seen and understood to be true, like that's a giant spider lady. The, many of them have never seen this before, but none of them comment on it. And uh, I think one of them is like, "Wow, that was impressive," and you know, like fucking Marvel levels. And then uh, Nemesis is like, "Don't celebrate this. There is no honor here." This could have been any of you. And it's um, like, I speak mean, for your fucking self. Yeah, yeah. Wow, asshole. I'd say that there is honor in saving the lives of people, especially kids. Yeah, I would say so. So there's, there's, so. there's multiple levels yeah. of honor. There's like, putting yourself in danger in order to protect people from a horrible monster, protecting the future of the people that she would have attacked, the current girl that you've just saved. Like, what, what are you talking about? And then it's like, this could have been you? I'm not the kind to, when losing a loved one, kill other people. That's not really necessarily what I do. That's just, you know, it's kind of weird. Seems a little weird. If my kid dies because of bad air, I'm not then going to go and attack people in my community. Unless, I guess, if they were responsible, but they're absolutely and not. Again, you're not a crazy spider lady, so, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. And that's the thing. It's not like anybody could be her. No, not everybody can be a crazy spider lady. 
It's supposed to just come across as, oh, look, that character's got, like, a unique understanding of this and a different perspective. But again, this is the last thing she says now for possibly the whole but movie. Like, I, think, I think she doesn't say anything for the rest of the movie. I'm pretty sure she says nothing. She's, like, so sad about having to kill Spider Lady when Spider Lady was just completely evil. I want other people to suffer to so that they can feel and... how I suffer. It's like, oh. She was like doing awful. an evil thing for an evil reason. Yeah. <laughs> There was nothing to it. Um, so anyway, next scene, we're, we're with our two mains again. And uh, uh, Cora says, Oh, you know, it was really good of you, Stephen, to help the little girl back there. That's not natural for some. Do you know what he says back to her? It's natural for you. You defended us back home. Like, well, no, it's not well, natural for her. She, did, she didn't <laughs> defend <help>. the girl. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the best. I almost would kind of want to frame it as the you are told of characteristics that are just not true. Like the film is like, look, she's heroic. And I'm like, no, she's not. She's <laughs> you not. just no showed me she wasn't. What do you You're mean? You're so desperate. You're so bad that you're just having characters lie about other characters now. You're a liar. <laughs> you sit on a throne of lies. I, I'll not <laughs> and it's so annoying to have Steven, who is a genuine hero in that moment, being like, no, you're a hero. It's like, no, yeah. she's not. You are, <laughs> you are the protagonist. They are. Of Rebel Moon. Um, and then she just starts doing exposition again. She's like, yeah, you know, exposition. I was the bodyguard of Princess Issa, who her name means the life giver, and she was created in response to generations of war. What? <laughs> That's such a you statement of like, uh, I'm sorry, what? Princesses? I guess, spiritually speaking, she arrived because there was just so much death and pain in the world. And you know what? She has the power to resurrect animals. That's just her it's ability. So, it's so also... fucking nuts to drop this on us after everything to just be like, yeah, that princess everyone's been talking about, she could resurrect animals and she was brought, uh, brought here because of the pain and strife of constant war. Yeah, this, this is, is like, like world wow. building that just <laughs> what? world building should teach me about the world, not make me go, what the fuck? What do you mean? Oh, I have Zach, so many what are you doing? Now. <laughs> what the I have fuck? More questions that I had before. This uh, has got so confusing so fast. <laughs> like, and it's so funny because it's just a part of it being like, yeah, there's just some backstory for you. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> like, okay. Which again, start to call into question, man, how convenient is it that when attempting to hide out, a character who has massive connections to the guy who took over the galaxy-spanning empire was also the bodyguard to, like, a person who could resurrect animals just so happens to be bumped into on a random planet by, like, the second-in-command General Leader Man. What are the odds of all of that happening? And also I mean, a robot galactic. that was activated by the love and loyalty he has to that very girl yeah. being seen in another girl. Yeah, exactly. What are the odds of that? Like, zo so close to zero in a galaxy, it's kind of un it's, it's astronomically low. Is the Insane, point. yeah. Anyway, gladiator time. Yeah, time to go to the gladi we're, we're gladiator. It's gladiator planet. We're going planet. to gladiator planet. Yeah. You guys remember the movie Gladiator? Remember, um, remember, he was in Gladiator. This actor was in Gladiator, so we're going to gladiator planet because gladiator Zack Snyder world. is a visionary. Yep. Um, I can summarize this whole scene as, are you the general? And he's like, my men died because of my surrender, because of my decisions. And it's like, oh, okay. And then she says, well, I don't think you're meant to die here. And if you won't do this for redemption, then do it for revenge. And then he joins. Yeah, he's like, I won't do it. And then she says, we'll do it for this reason. He's like, okay, I'll join you. And then he doesn't say anything for the That's next That's it for the whole minutes. movie, yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's just around. That is the, that's literally that, it. That is, they used the Master Ball on this Pokemon and we moved on. <laughs> we, we are not spending time on this. That's <laughs> it. You that's got all that, Gladiator Bad. Uh, yeah, bad guys have a scene and the oh, only wait, thing... Just for clear, it actually is Gladiator Planet. It's like ancient Rome. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. got their little Roman outfits and there's a Gladiator Pit. And um, there's a big coliseum with banners on it, and the guy from Gladiator is the the actor, and it's just Rome. They just go to it's Rome. It's terrible, is what you're saying. <laughs> it's so it's like uninspired movie. and awful. It's a movie where they go to Rome. It's um, 
That's what, look how ugly it is, too. I don't know what's going on. Like, he's lost his ability to make things look nice uh, at all. That's such a hideous shot. It's so look at the colors. Yeah. Look at those colors. It's so fake, too. Oh, but you see, that's the point, because it's meant to show how miserable and destitute this oh, okay. place is. Oh, sure. all right. That's well, the point. Yeah, that's it's meant bad. to look ugly. It, it ain't good to watch something like Rebel Moon after watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't help. Oh, it doesn't not. help. So, uh, yeah, he's on the team now. Villain scene time! The guy yeah, but... that they went to for information before, he can tell them about that planet and where they're hiding and stuff, and then they introduce a, a mechanic that's going to be super important, okay? Those little, those little devices that capture people, they come with a little gun that when you put it into the, the back of the thing and fire, it'll paralyze them, and then it will release them. That's something it does. You can't stop it from doing that. That is mechanically built in. You paralyze them, and then it automatically releases them. And the release is particularly funny, IMO. It just drops them onto the floor. And bear in mind, they are paralyzed. And these are these are captives. Can you think of anything that might go wrong with a system like so, that? Okay, they might so just be clear. really hard and hurt their head um, such that they die. So, well, also, like, if you want to transport a prisoner and paralyze them... Uh, like it, it, it's like a drill bit that goes into their neck. Like yeah, it actually, the like actually physically paralyzes them. Yeah. Um, it's actually really fucking terrible. Um, but what it does is it paralyzes them and then it lets them go. So now you have to carry them. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense where, at all. Where you need to get them to go. So only paralyze them if they're at the location where you want them to stay. But this would be one of the worst ever examples of setup. This is going to be incredibly important. It's going to change everything oh, later. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's annoying, but yeah, that's so the bad guys are coming. Got to be careful now. So we use that information we established earlier of the rebels are hiding out on that planet with that king guy. We go to the planet, arrive, and our main character just has a chat with the king immediately. Yeah, just just they got, just this. As far as he's concerned, some rando. Well, once again. <laughs> There's no civilization here. This is one that they, they argue later has been thriving for tens of thousands of years or something. They arrive, it's like, this is just fucking green screen with a bunch of dudes holding sticks. There's nothing yeah. here. Not a place. This is I don't buy it place. at all. Yeah, this is, an, this is a green screen set that you just CGI'd some aliens on. Boo. Nothing about this world feels real. It feels so no. not real. It's all fake. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Yeah, so, um, she's like, I want to meet the Rebels, and then he's like, yeah, they'll be here in a bit. And it's like, wow, you guys suck. Oh, <laughs> like, wow, the Rebels are just be here to meet this rando, as far as they're aware? Because remember, she is significant, but they don't know that. She's nope. just some person. And, and yeah, just like Clockwork, the Rebels arrive, and then the leader of the Rebels, being Cyborg and Girl, uh, are, are like, this is, this is sus. You guys have contacted yeah. us on, I think he says it's a flagless vessel um, that's unknown on our systems or whatever and, and you're sitting there like oh, oh so why did you agree to meet them uh, yeah why didn't you just this is just obviously a trap why this was obvious yeah it's obviously a trap but no they're, they're fine and then um, this is where they established that they were the ones that bought grain off them as well meaning like I said they've supplied the both off? the empire and the rebellion grade this tidy village it's yeah. so funny and stupid and, and what are the odds that again she just happened to she happened to be on that village innocu with the purpose of trying to hide mm -hmm. and she, she just happened to be in the village that was in the most significant and important village that there ever was so uh they ask for them to help and join the cause which there's no reason for them to do it at all and then cyborg is like hmm Okay, I'm gonna join you. And the sister's like, whoa, 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 why? Let's talk about this. And he says, well, he's got two reasons. One, if the bad guys... Uh, sorry, if, the, if these guys have found us, it's only a matter of time before the bad guys do. <laughs> so, one, uh, I guess, you know what? True, actually, and you should probably move. Because you've been telling everybody where you're hiding. Which is like the worst way to stay secret, actually. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. so maybe it's in very future, sporting of them, though. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Um, his second reason is that um, we can't have more and more planets dying for us. We gotta, we gotta, it's gotta stop. And it's so funny because it's like, well, that's the rebellion. That's what you're doing. You're trying to stop 
the Empire. Isn't that the whole fucking point? The idea that it's like, oh, but there are some people who are getting killed because the Empire believe we might be hiding where they are and we can't have that. It's like, oh, so you just give up then? Just GG? No conversations like this are had, by the way. Because I was about to entertain the idea that this isn't necessarily bad storytelling. You can have a character that says, like, I can't do this anymore. I can't have people die for us. We have to... So and then another character is like, more people will die if we give up. That sort of thing. But we don't have that conversation. He just says... You can have, like, characters in a story. Yeah, yeah, characters. That's the word. Yeah, we could have had those. Never mind. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's hilarious that his whole issue here is the, the they need to defend themselves now. They need to attack the mother world because they've been found... When that was always the case, especially giving away your location, and the people are dying, which I assume is the whole fucking reason you started the rebellion. But now you're going to like dissolve it in an attempt to help them. But uh, yeah, so he's going to join, and he asks everyone else in the team if they want to join, and about like eight or so of them join up. <laughs> yeah, this is the entire, randos, this is the just, rebellion. Uh, the rebellion that's threatening the galaxy spanning massive empire. It's like yes, 30 uh, guys. And they all look fucking same. Well, well, they look the same in the sense that they're all like faceless, characterless drones that are all going to get killed. Also, but edgy, they all have they have the same looking. paint. They have the same uh, right. face paint. Yeah, they have which is, yeah. identifying uniform sort Wait, of Yeah, you, you don't want to have that if you're like, like hiding from the Empire and all of the Empire people. It's bad. That it's means dumb. that they, they can see you but, uh, and they'll know who you are. We have our team now. That's our team, everybody. We're into the third act. Isn't this yep, exciting? Uh, but we got one, another scene between uh, Pilot Man and main character. Because remember Pilot Man? Remember him? He's in the I movie. Do. He is um, in the movie. We, we, don't worry, I have mentioned every last piece of interesting things to say about him. I haven't missed anything. <laughs> so yep. it's like, okay. He's, he's just been around like everyone else has been around after they were collected. They're, they've just been around. It's particularly it's funny around. because he says, uh, he says, why would the leader of the rebellion guys join up? Uh, it seems like short-sighted because he's trying to say like it's a fucking bad move. Are you immediately like, like you joining? Like you? Yeah. Yes. Like what? And then uh, he says, um, "You make me want to be honorable to her." <laughs> and again, I thought it was just bad writing. I was like, "What the fuck? Why? You don't know yeah. anything about her at all. <laughs> you barely even spoken." But the the truth is, he's just selling her bullshit, and she's buying it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's, he's imagine evil. someone telling you they're changing. They they used to be a scallywag. They used to be someone who would just do evil things for money. But they changed their mind when they met you, and you've literally exchanged about two sentences with this person. You're like the guy you're a who liar. the, the self. You're a liar. Of course you are. Yeah. Doing this you're trolling free. me. It's uh, it's insane. And yeah, he's you know that's about to pay off. So wonderful. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Uh, the bad guys just destroy the people who are hiding the rebellious mans. Um, the civilization has thrived for 10,000 years, and yet they have zero defenses at all. They have zero defenses. And then he hits the, the king here with a stick, too. He does. He uh, loves uh, but, but not before establishing. He understands honor, but he does not understand charity, which is so funny. <laughs> Because he's evil. They're, they're the bad guys. They're the bad they're guys. Very, they, remember, yeah. love is weakness and charity is confusing. <laughs> like, why would we ever charity do that? Charity is confusing. That's when you give your stuff to other people for no reason. Why would you do that? Uh, yeah, so that guy's love dead. Love is weakness, by the way. Oh, and uh, <laughs> they destroy the entire planet. They raise the entire yeah, I planet. Do, I, I think it's implied as, that, yeah, they destroy As the, they're leaving because... as well, there's, there's fucking crazy explosions happening just as they're leaving atmosphere. Yes, they're getting in that plane. Yeah, they and, destroy and, the and, civilization, and I think it's Im implied. Yeah, they destroyed it. They destroyed it, the whole thing. Absolutely not. Because Some, they helped out the 40 rebels or this, how, whatever it was, so, well, they, so the civilization got destroyed. It's just a primary example of being a fucking idiot when, when writing a faction like this. Do you understand the resources it takes to raise a planet? And then do you understand the resources you've wiped out by raising this planet? Do you know what I'm and saying? Do you like, also understand, like, writing wise, do you understand that how can the good guys possibly win if the, that's the true bad too. guys can destroy a whole civilization? And like then you remember what the opening of this stupid movie was, is that the Mother World are looking for resources throughout the galaxy, and that they were going to the point of trying to get grain off a tiny farming settlement, and yet, they destroy a thriving planet. 
with all of their weaponry. They have cost themselves immense resources to destroy immense resources. For no reason other Zach. than you help, you help the bad guys, <laughs> so we're going to destroy the entire civilization. It's, it's like... Zach, none of this makes any sense, man. Nothing in this movie makes sense. It's actually kind of, like, insane how little of it makes sense. You'd think that as you just... Like, the ramblings of a lunatic mm -hmm. would make some level of sense, right? Because they'd make sense to the, the lunatic who's writing them down. Yeah. But, <laughs> but not here. Hey, you know what, Rags? The four-hour cut. That's where it'll make sense. That's right, that's right. Release the Snyder Cut. Oh god, <laughs> it's gonna be even worse. Not that I'll ever fucking watch it. I, I, I'm so done with Snyder products. <laughs> it's so terrible consistently. But I will, I mean, when's the next one out? Is it like four months from now or something? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's like April next year. Fucking Scargiver. Yep, I'm sure that this there'll be a trilogy This getting my well. brain scars. So, I'm so curious to see what the viewership's gonna look like from one to two. Well, and like I said, uh, people are clowning on this movie. Like, I'm seeing so many, and not even highlighting all the inconsistencies, of which there are many and there are they are huge. It's a lot of story, general story criticism, so like, badly paced, I don't care about any of these characters, they're not characterized at all, it's completely disjointed, it's a complete rip-off. There's all these different points of view about just basic storytelling tenants that are making people say, like, Zach doesn't know what he's doing. And now and it's making people say, did he ever know what he was doing? The answer is no! <laughs> No, this is one of those uh, those like fodder for video kind of movies. Like you could go yeah. through this movie, and there's a million problems with every scene. It is so shit through and through. It's easily one of the worst movies. Well, I've but ever then seen. there are also stretches between those scenes of ten minutes of nothing. <laughs> it's like yeah. waiting for the next thing to happen. It's like oh, there we go. So uh, we're at this port, and we're preparing the ships to go back to I guess the village and. Um, uh, Cyborg is like, yeah, get your fuel up, everyone's oh, going great. But uh, one of the bounty hunters we saw earlier in the bar is talking to Pilot Man. And he's like, everything is done. And then they're like handing each other money or, or calling in things. And our main character is staring at this, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. hmm. Hmm. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. That seems a little suspicious. I don't know. Um, all I can gather from this is that she is dense as hell, and she can't actually figure anything out on her own. Because uh, it's you start seeing the ships reveal themselves, the the boxes start opening and capturing people, and she's just looking around the whole time. Basically, complete betrayal happens. Kai, the pilot, was evil. He was paid off to do all of this. That was his actual motivation. Yeah, the I say that. doing this all for free. Turns out he's bad. It, it, it turns out it, it wasn't the motive you thought, which was... What exactly? Nothing? Uh, he didn't give us a motivation at all? Just so a like, nice oh. guy. Turns out he wasn't just a nice random Damn it. guy. So uh, all the heroes are captured by these machines that grab you, and the villains arrive. And I think everybody watching this movie at this point is like, it's over. How the fuck can they yeah. possibly get out of this? There's no way. There's no possible way for the good guys to get it. This is out. This is it. The movie's over. All of the people are in the little crab prisons machines, so they're completely held in place and captured. And that that's it. It's done. That's it. Over. Well. So then, um, then Francis just goes one by one explaining their backstories again. Because that's the only thing we can do in this <laughs> yeah. movie. It's like, ah, General Titus, famous for doing this and ended up here. He doesn't say anything because he hasn't said anything in the whole fucking movie. It's like priceless at this point. He goes through everybody and he ends up at Steven and he's like, why are you here? And it's such a moment of like, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. I don't know what's going I'm on. just trying to help my village. So yeah, he's like, well, that's it. We win. Paralyze them all. Take them all. This will be great. Excellent. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's the smart villain thing to do. He just mm -hmm. fucking paralyzes him and takes him with him. Like, oh, yeah, wow, some actual competence from villains in media. How could they possibly fuck this up? And then Kai, the pilot, says, hey, Steve, I want you to paralyze Main Girl. And you're like, why? <laughs> it's like, why? What's the point He's of that? He's bad. He's like, yeah, he's do it, guy. do it, coward. And then he's like, you're sick. And he's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> and he puts the thing in, 
and the thing beeps and you're like oh god what's gonna happen and it's like getting tense the music's rising and 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 uh steven's it's like oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm like <gasps> and then he pulls out the gun and fires it into pilot man's head killing him and Whoa. releasing her well, so you have to keep in mind the mechanic of the machine is once you've done the paralyze, it releases. So he did the paralyze on Badman, which releases Good Girl from Machine. That makes so, sense. It worked that way. You turn the lock, which opens it, and 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 so. Uh, um, oh. <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> no, like uh, I'm just like the bad guys have won. And then Kai is allowed to do this, even though Kai is not a member of the Empire. He's just allowed to set all this up to have it happen. He basically gives the farmer the key to release protagonist girl, Cora. Well, here's the thing, Rags. On top of everything else, how does he know how this machine works? Yeah, apparently he also knows how the machine works. Yeah, never seen it before. Nope. What if it was impossible to remove it once you slotted it in without paralyzing her? And you need like to understand, this is one of those films where you go through frame by frame and you can fully understand how retarded everything is. He kills Pilot Man. That's his action, so to speak. Not that this is like a turn-based RPG, but that's what he's doing. So he's released and her sorry. now. What's she doing? She jumps down and attacks person in front of her. So what's, but what's all of the other doing? people doing? Yeah. They've they all got their guns, and they're all ready for anything, but they even give Hero Girl a hero shot. She jumps down, hits person, grabs rifle, and then she's like, like you know, like, like Rocket Raccoon in Guardians 1 where he gets the gun? They do a thing yeah. like that. And it's like, you don't have the capacity to do that. Everyone's aiming at you, and there's nothing else <laughs> happening. What do you mean? <laughs> like, it is oh, some ready. of the most absurd plot armor that I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, because it's, the way it's, it's edited, ridiculous. they want to convince you now that everyone's free. It's like, wait, what? how? What? No, it's just her. And then she avoids, like, fucking 17 shots immediately, and all of the other red shirts, they're all just uh, uh, out. They're all attacking, and it's like, what? How did this happen? Uh, and, and yeah, uh, that everyone know. gets released, because... Uh, I think one of them, I can't remember if it's Steven or not, he unlocks uh, Nemesis and then she cuts open all the locks for everyone else. And it's just like, oh, that's that. What's really funny is that a Cyborg says, everyone get in your ships, go, 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 go. When the enormous enemy ship is just there, Amy gets gun at them. And I was like, Have, isn't that just going to blow them up? And then it blows them up. Zack Snyder's <laughs> writing what to was the, the point of all that? free here is, is that the bad guys just don't shoot them. Yeah, but well, this, this yeah, well, time he does because they're red shirts and no one cares probably, about him. He probably just wrote, they all get free and the fighting ensues, and then yeah. when they're on set, it's like, oh. Oh, wait, well, how do we actually like, make this yeah, show be a thing? And then the next thing of interest is uh, Cyborg Sacrifice, which is pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah. He, uh... <laughs> that shot where he's running up the thing, it's like, <laughs> Rawr, I'm gonna get you. So he's he's got like a a broken off bit of metal, and he runs up a ramp, and jumps, and intends to just slam down on Turret Man. And like I was genuinely shocked because it's so funny. He stabs through, and the guy dodges. He <laughs> dodges it. It's like, wait, what? In the and then chair, he just while he's sitting he down in the chair, it, and then he shoots. He just pulls out his pistol chest. and shoots it. <laughs> and when I saw that, I was like, wow, they're killing him off like straight away. He's barely been in this movie. It wow. would be, it would be like if he's, Aomer he's threw the spear. Movie, like the rest of the characters. If Aomer yeah. threw the spear at the Muma kill, and the guy dodged and it, dodged and then it. he pulled out a crossbow, shot it into <laughs> Aomer's face, and that was that. <laughs> like what? <laughs> It's so weird. It's not that it can't happen. It's just what the hell. <laughs> like, what? Well, it's just it's just well, we're killing him off. He's done. Bye. Yep. And uh, but not not before he uh like makes gets a second hit. Crash. Well, so I mean, yeah. we kind of skipped over, but like, how the fuck did he pierce what is supposed to be glass, glass that is that ready for space? The vacuum. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a random. It's not even a weapon. It's just a random sharp piece of metal that yep. he found. You might even think it's like a bit of debris coming in with high force that these mirror windows would absolutely be built for, but nope. No, he's, he's got them. 
And then he uh, he t hits the controller in this turret bay that destroys the whole ship because it's... <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> 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 I think you know what I'm laughing at, if if you know where I'm at in the film. This fucking shit is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like an AI generated image. Dude, that, dude, that was so funny. <laughs> you know random girl? You know random girl, right? Random girl. You reminded me when, you, when, we talk about, girl? Uh, when we talk about, because you mentioned, do you remember in Aquaman 1 when Black Manta starts screaming? Do you yeah. That? When, yeah, when he's like, no! Nah! It's like, that was really funny. This was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this was so funny. The, it's, the mouth extends just far enough that it looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, big, really funny expression. It's really funny. And also, given what's been happening, that he ran up, like, along the ship. Jumped in, missed, and then got shot <laughs> in the I, chest by the some way that random it's guy. Doesn't do it justice. It's profoundly <laughs> retarded. It's funny though. <laughs> well, yeah, because he he deals so much damage. He destroys the enemy force essentially. Inexplicably, but, he he uses this random point. piece of shrapnel that's it's somewhat shaped <laughs> like a spear to jump on a spaceship. Stab through the spaceship cockpit but miss, window, but miss, miss, get shot multiple times, and then take out the spear from where he had plunged it, and then stab the pilot again, so that the, <laughs> so that the, so that the pilot slumps forward on the controller. No, he pushes the controller. Because I thought that you thought it was that just it would slump forward. That's the, the classic. Side. Yeah. I just thought it was the gunner on the side, but apparently this goofy ass spaceship, that's the pilot. That's the pilot well. of the whole ship, yeah. And so And he... then it crashes into the platform <laughs> and kills many of the bad guys. I mean like all of them. Uh... It ends the oh, except Francis. Well, it no, remember that main girl runs through and kills a bunch yeah, of people while she's running it... through to oh, get to right, the other right, side yeah, to yeah, fight yeah. Francis. Yeah. We so need to explain this like logistically, right? Yeah, just think of right. a big long platform. The ship is about to crash onto a part of it to just destroy it. That's where main bad Francis is. And main girl is like, I've got to get to him before the platform crashes. Question mark? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? She desperately when, works really something? hard to get to him. My th my thinking was the platform is going to fall down, right? Because if it's disconnected, yeah, then and it's it does. Fall. But no, well, it 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 falls, but it also kind of hovers. It cuts it in half. Well, it, the, the platform oh, yeah. falls. Oh he, no, yeah, you're right. Then it falls and it he lands on like the, on the, the the other platform. The yeah. space buoy, the space buoy, the buoy. What what's the thing in the water? The, the floating thing. I think it's a buoy, it's like right? that, but yeah, buoy, but for space. Yes. Which good thing they landed on that. What's that I mean is they both would have just fallen to their death. Why is she so desperate to get to him when this whole she recognizes this whole platform is about to be destroyed? What's the point? It's like, does she need to kill him herself? Is that the angle? She knows. She knows he's gonna land on a a, a buoy that's below, and they yeah, need to have their their final fight, buoy. their final yeah, battle. This is the yeah, final battle. Fight. Yeah, well, it's, so it's dumb as fuck, and uh, all the other characters, again, just on pause. They ain't doing anything now. It's just uh, main girl. Yeah, I guess much. they just assume that she's dead. Also, I think the fight's over. They're all just dead now, yeah. Yeah, every yeah. bad guy died. The whole ship has been destroyed, and all that's left is Francis, who slid onto the uh, the space station-y small thing, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even... Whatever function it serves, it's great that it was there, because obviously he... Well, I was about to say he would have died if he'd fallen, but I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't have. I don't even know what kind of creature well, he is. What we're gonna find out about him, yeah. Also, her gun disappeared. I guess the logic yeah. is that it, she lost she it when. It. Yeah, yeah but you don't it. see that happen. No, no, no. It's just implied that she, because now she doesn't have it, that she doesn't. She doesn't have it. Lame. Because if she had had it, that'd have been it. Well, then again, it's it anyway. She beats him, obviously. <laughs> I'm saying this like that's not. That's yeah, not she beats him in a fight. She's too much. She's too strong and too amazing and powerful, and she. Kills him. Mm hmm I mean, that's it. <laughs> she wins. They have a, a pretty particularly yeah. shit fight. He performs pretty badly at it. You, you're obviously not invested. You know she's gonna win. And you don't really care. Because he's like mm -hmm. a wacky, silly, I'm so evil, I would kill babies just to drink their blood 
kind of person. Given what we learn about him, though, it's kind of weird that he loses. Um, but yeah. we're not we're not quite there yet. Well, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I'm I haven't got much commentary left for the film at all. Like she she well, beats him. Okay, so he, he's a robot. <laughs> Yeah, um, some some form he's of robot. A robot. So you figure that he would win because if he's a robot, he's probably stronger than the average person. Well, and he's she's trained though. A bigger guy. Yeah, but he's trained. Yeah, but she's like really yeah, trained. Yeah, he's like a cyborg android man. Yeah, but she's like super trained. And she's she she is very skinny though. So yeah, that kind of gives her the advantage. I would say that gives her yep. extra strength. Yep. To have it's mainly it's, no there's no fat. Mass. It's just muscle. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, she's a lean, mean fighting machine. Um. Hmm. <laughs> so she kicks him off the platform after beating the teeth out of him, stabbing him a couple of times, and breaking his arm. Obviously, he's fine. Yep. Uh, hey, it's he, fine. He'll be back. This is as effective as when you defeat one of your primary villains in the first movie, and then you're like, don't worry, he'll still be intimidating. You have to mention the second fake beard. Yeah. We're not there yet, he, though. There's, no, oh, we're okay, not quite okay. There. We got to do our uh, all. The, oh yeah, sorry. Torak says something like, oh, don't worry, it's okay." Because she, the remember the literal who is sad because uh, Cyborg died. The big, the screaming lady that we know so well. She was very upset by him dying. Yeah, that <laughs> that character that we met two minutes ago was really upset that the character we met two minutes ago, three minutes ago, <laughs> died doing something profoundly retarded. <laughs> yes. It's, oh, that makes no sense whatsoever. That somehow, like, <clears throat> you know, ended up being the best thing that could have ever possibly been done. Uh, General Titus does have a line before the film ends. He's like, "This small act of defiance gives voice to the voiceless." Like, it's like, wait, what? He's like, "This is more than just a fallen prick officer and some of his men. This is the beginning of something." Which is funny because it's like, yeah, it could be the beginning of them clamping down so hard that like everyone gets murdered and you guys get framed for being like. Essentially, uh, what would you call it? Like, like you know, like when a rebel, um, like a, a terroristic oh, force, um, essentially. It's uh, well, I mean, as has been pointed out, right? The 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 bad guys are meant to be space Nazis, and it is well known that the Nazis retaliated very, very harshly to acts of rebellion and resistance well, and they control, in a lot of the places that they occupy. They control the media, I presume. So they'll say, like, these people yeah. were criminals, and they killed. They were attacking oh, it, civilians. I mean, we tried to stop again, them, and they blew up our ships. Th that just seems like something that would be worth talking about if you guys realize that they're going to retaliate big time. And we need to think about that. Like, how do we feel about the fact that what we did here might result in a bunch of uh, innocent people being slaughtered? Um, like, nah, like, that, we that won. might be the retaliation. We won. Yeah, but instead, we won. It's, like, it's like, this is, a, this is baby's first rebellion story where yeah, not the good guys just that... get to win. Yeah. This isn't like Star Massive... Wars where blowing up their giant super weapon that they tried to fucking control the universe with under an iron well, fist that, that was a crazy would inspire... Victory. Yeah, and that would inspire a huge amount of support for the rebellion to be like, yeah. you actually that... dismantled and destroyed the thing that like, they were threatening the planets is, with. Is that... This failure here on the part of the bad guys, it's catastrophic that they lost this battle. It doesn't they make any them. sense that they lost. They had them and they it lost them no and they got sense, wiped yeah. out. But I kind of feel bad for them. Wow. I'm not going to go that <laughs> far. The, <laughs> the thing is, is that even in the context of this dramatic defeat, compared to them, the Death Star was a massive success. Of uh, Like, destroying the Death Star was huge for the Rebellion. That's huge. That's like, that, that's a massive victory. This one is tiny, all things considered, despite how cataclysmic it was for the bad guys. Yeah, they guys took out one, of, uh, I don't even know up. if that's a capital ship. It's probably like a mid, like, warship. I mean, it's like, yeah. I, I mean, mean it looks smaller than the, uh, the big ship that went over their place. A mother uh, place. world ship, so, yeah. Yeah. Or well, the it, king's it's gaze, It's kind of right? crazy that they don't... And, and what happens, if, if that guy's been communicating with them, then that means that bad guy might well know. He might know. It's like, oh, shit. She's that fucking lady from, uh, from that village. We're going to go there and blow it up. Yeah. But doesn't that seem like a likely They outcome? only seem to even, think good things will happen as a result of what they've done today. That's it. Even though th there's there's a really good chance that it's going to get harder before it's going to get like things are going to get worse before they get better. Mhm. Mm uh so they head home and that's where Robert is like, "Hey." And that's that. They'll no, be set up for part deer two. No, he put antlers on and he's in the field of wheat. Yeah. Cuz that's just that's what happened. He's, he's in the field out, of wheat, and he's that, got deer again. Antlers that'll be on. in the extended cut where we find out that he went on a pilgrimage or something, and he went and hunted an elk, a space elk, and got and got uh, horns. Yeah, don't want to make any of that. I guess. Yeah, we'll find yeah. out because we're obviously going to watch the extended cut 
because that we love this Obviously. one so much. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. The way no, that Rebel no, Moon was meant to um, be consumed. I will. I. I really will not. I don't want to. <laughs> I've already said out? I'm not doing it. <laughs> It's uh, coming out shortly before I think the next one's come. The next oh my god, one comes out. So in a few months, um, I think wait, I think I refuse wait, on the principle next part on this two one. comes out in a few months. Yeah. So okay. So the timeline is part one's come out. The director's cut for this part one will be coming out yeah, shortly I thought you before were meaning. part two. There's a director's cut. No, yes. Yes. The, it, it's cut. been talked about. There will be a director's cut of this, an R-rated director's cut version that they're going to release shortly before part two. Four hours long. I I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I object to that one on principle. It's like, you, you can't do that. You can't <laughs> release your film on Netflix where you don't have the same restrictions of thinking about how many times you can play it in theaters. Um, any of those sort of runtime considerations. To then be like, oh well, here's an extent. Here's like the extended director's cut that comes out a couple of weeks, you know, before a couple of months after. Like that's just bullshit. That's stupid. But yes, that's real rags. Oh, I, I legit, I legitimately. No, I know. And it's the true, it's the true version. This is the not the true version. Yeah, because I figured, like, yeah, this is he's got total control. Let me see if I can find because he doesn't have to do that. Let me see if I can find what Snyder said because he he said some really embarrassing things about uh (laughs) about it. Let me see if I can find it. He often says (laughs) embarrassing things. Yeah. Um. It and it's it's so it's Netflix. You have less problems to deal with when it comes to um runtime and presumably less problems with ratings as well because it's Netflix. Like, presumably, ratings and stuff is, is less complicated in terms of problems that it could pose. I guess not, maybe not, but the runtime one especially. But again, why do you keep making, like, these four-hour-long movies? <laughs> like, trim them down. Well, uh... Well, while well, I look for yeah, what he yeah. said. So, <laughs> I got distinct uh, Revenge of the Sith feels from this. They show that uh, Evilman is, like, on the floor, covered in blood, like, dying. And then there's this ship covered in with a spotlight. It's like... <gasps> Palpatine. Oh, He's gonna rescue Anakin. <laughs> and then they cut to him on a stretcher in like a creepy medical place, getting like, you know, haphazard surgery and stuff. It's like, oh my god, they're gonna make a Darth Vader, but not quite. He gets, um, I don't know, plugged in Matrix style and covered in like a goopy watery thing, and then he can commune with Balisarius, the big boss bad man, in ice Iceland. I, I don't really know what's going on here. Um, and as they it's have their conversation, like the, the Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, and talks to the, the supreme lady. intelligence. Yeah, the supreme intelligence. As they talk, he keeps tapping the ground and gradually breaking the ice, which is just like okay. <laughs> and yeah, this is where the uh, the second very just the really awkward makeup to try and make this actor look a lot older than he actually is. Um, He's clearly like thirty. Well, because. <laughs> Yeah, it's it. weird, <clears throat> and he's gonna have way more screen time than the young version of himself. So why didn't you just get a different guy to play him when he was younger? That would have been the thing, or de-age the old man. It probably would have been fine because yeah. it would have been quick instead of doing all mm-hmm. this. But you know, um. So yeah, he he does. This is a funny line. He just somewhere where he's just like, "How did you lose?" It's like, "Yeah, I know, right?" Like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you I, I, fucked I that nothing. up so hard. Um, I right, I found. So, discussing film, Zack Snyder describes his director's cut of Rebel Moon Part 1 as a, quote, completely different movie. He adds that he wanted the main film R-rated, but at this sort of scale and cost, you say, it's not 100% responsible to have that demand. Well, that's not... Oppenheimer cost $100 million and it was R-rated. Deadpool 2 cost $100 million and it was R-rated. Joker was, what, 50, 50, 60 million dollars and that was R-rated? There are R-rated films that are expensive. He doesn't have any Um, balls. But also the whole completely different movie. It's like I don't buy that. Well, uh, completely um, different. You say. I I buy like, the other story, which is that they're trying to recreate the the memes. I think so. I think that's obvious. But I don't think it's going to work. Everybody's tired of it. Everyone's fucking tired of hearing about. I've like, been seeing a cut. lot of people being oh, like, "Oh no, shit. the studio ruined it again, didn't they? Oh no, mm-hmm. the bigger longer cuts, the better cut. Oh no, it's like, yeah. ooh, uh, yep." Th- the Everybody biggest thing, the Everybody's most satisfying done. thing, Fringy, is that people have kind of died down defending the Snyder Cut, which is like, oh, thank God, we're finally not, there. No, I, I think we're at a point, especially now that it's all done and over and we're starting again, it's like, okay, can we, like, We can let's finally try acknowledge again, you know? how shit the Snyder Cut is. <laughs> let's try again, you know? Let's just try again. We'll do a new continuity. Um, and, and also, it's been real nice as well that there's much, much more, like, can we get, like, a happy <clears> Superman? <throat> can we get, like, a happy, optimistic uh, Superman? 
No, um, that's not lame like, and gay. We have to no, have but, an edgy, broody. No, but if there's like more Superman. people are starting to get uh, partial to that, more people want like let's have a happy Superman. Well, more people seem to be coming around <laughs> to the idea that wow, Snyder fucked everything up for like a whole decade. Damn. It seems like people like to fight about that. The argument being, oh yeah, but they were making money when Snyder did. It's like they were making money when the perception wasn't like at its worst yet. Um, they were making money before it really set in. Of like, damn man. I feel like it follows. It's the same as how the rise of Skywalker doing badly and Solo failing are the consequence of TLJ. It just makes sense to me, you yeah. know? And plus, Aquaman was, that was afterward and that made a billion dollars. So, yeah. you know, and Shazam was a modest Aquaman success. made more fucking money than, like, wait, any Snyder project, right? In terms of profit? Aquaman is the most successful uh, DC film. Uh, and and some people try to argue that's within his, like, pantheon or something. Um, like... I mean, he was attached as a producer, eh. but this was after, this was after Justice League, Justice League come out. Um, and yeah, that's was, what and, I mean. Like, it again, doesn't feel I, like it should count as much I, at all. Well, I, I don't know. I feel like it's clear that it follows, because I, I would, DC's clown reputation doesn't exist in a vacuum beyond the early films. Like, the newer films certainly contribute to the cringe factor, but the older films certainly do as well. Um, and again, Batman v Superman was not as successful as I wanted it to be. Plain and simple. But, um, but yes, like, I don't think that the whole Snyder Cut thing, because it was already annoying first time around, but like, to try it again, it's just like, dude, come on. Like, are you, really? Like, you trying to convince people that you didn't get to make the film that you wanted this time around? Come on. And yeah, um, there's, there's nothing else to say about the movie other than Bal Balisarius says, go get her. And he's like, okay. And then he screams at the camera, and then it's like, all right, back for part two. Um, we'll see how many people show up for part two. It's really bad. It's terrible. Uh, it's miserable. It's, it's um, an awful movie. It's kind of offensive as well, um, just the, like as, as a thing that exists in terms of just haplessly grabbing on and latching on to a lot of like elements that exist in other films and throwing them together without any semblance of coherency. With yeah, a massive he, amount of money to bolster tell... that vision. Oh yeah, this bugs world has me. Bugs no me a lot. character. I don't like it. Zach has seen movies before. He's, he's he likes movies. Doesn't know how to make them. Doesn't has know how to tell no a story. Can't do it. Make a can't do he it. can't write a story. He can't make a movie. And yet somehow, inexplicably, he's gotten to be in charge of all of these projects. Again, this and is a dream shit. project. Like it, yeah, obviously, the film's dream. awful, but this is the dream project. You get as much money as you could reasonably ask for to million create dollars. a to create a brand new science fiction universe with the promise of two films. Like, not just one, but two. And you get to and make an extended the, cut. <laughs> the, and the illusion of uh, alluding to, yeah, you'll get to make more. We're planning to make this a series. This is like, again, it's it's, it's so funny how it's the same fucking thing with like Dave Filoni. Of, they both got handed a dream project and it was terrible. And they this suck. is not the first time Army of the Dead is also a time. dream project. Project. Uh, look at the cost and like look at the money you had as well as another one where you zombies in vegas it's the easiest thing ever films and everything and and still it's crazy i don't get it but hopefully this is the end uh, <laughs> in terms of like you know i'm just like okay all hopefully right, it has consequences right. i don't know if we're gonna be looking at a wonder woman 89 84 sorry situation here like in terms of i think i career think consequences super, what's going to be really interesting because I get the impression maybe the first film will be considered a success by Netflix, but it's all going to be about the second one. How many people show up for the second one after giving the first one a shot? And Who's going to be talking a lot of people about the film in a week? I've already been trying the whole. The second one will answer a lot of your criticisms of like, this one was set up, okay? Mm. It was the first part. The second one will have all the character stuff. It'll have all the action. And it's just like, the second one's probably going to be worse. Man, it's... It's kind of Almost, weird. Fellowship I mean... Fellowship did a lot of the character work, um, and then that character work was uh, followed through on in the subsequent films. It's weird how Fellowship did it, yeah. you know, being a, a great movie in and of itself. I mean, yeah, Fellowship was the, the favorite for us three of the trilogy, yeah. and it's arguably yeah, the, was... the setup one. And it's like, yeah, sure, okay. If a, mm -hmm. if some for whatever reason a war broke out and only Fellowship of the Ring was released, just consider how much is self-contained and how much it still sets up and how much we want to see more. It's the there exact opposite. Child of Fire, Rebel Moon, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's two and a half hours long. Two, it is that's long, a lot okay? of time. That's, that's a lot of time to get. It's a lot of time. Not as long as Fellowship, but uh, it's longer than most films. 
most films don't get two and a half hours to tell their story and somehow manage to do it. And again, uh, like how much have we actually gained about the world? We we we've gained basic information about it as well as a, a bunch of these planets that don't feel like they exist in the same universe. Uh, where we met characters who did like an action scene uh, or had a very short conversation and then joined the team and didn't say anything again. Like, surely this was the film to build character and then massively advance the plot more so in the second one. But we didn't build character. What yeah, could we have no foundation. What tell you about any of these characters? Really? You've what could they tell you about? made a lateral move from nowhere to mm -hmm. nowhere. We haven't Pretty set much. anything up to build up on. We're basically, it's just like, oh, we're in sci-fi world and some stuff's happening. And there's good guys and bad guys. And that's all that we have, mm -hmm. essentially, to mm -hmm. work with. We don't have any characters. And what do you Wait, think the we theme don't know is? What, they're what is the do. theme? Do good of things? Rebel Moon. <laughs> uh, the, oh, what, fucking what hell, is the Freddy. theme? Um, rebel against evil... Yeah, rebel the against, like, evil bad regime? Bad. Bad, I bad guess? men are fight against bad people. Be a yeah. hero. Like, be that's... He yeah, okay, yeah. 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 I, except for the times when you stand idly by as uh, people are in Your peril. Your past doesn't define you. Ironically, if she would have stood idly by while the woman was about to get taken to Rapeville in the barn, then the plot just wouldn't have happened. It, it would have been bad, of course, but the village wouldn't be on the verge of extinction. It would, like, realistically, by them doing that, the village gets destroyed and all of its people. Well, none of that ever um, gets, like, properly but... addressed. No consequence of any actions, and everyone's just so... Weird and retarded and characterless all at the same time that it's just really hard to stay invested at all. Well, the protagonist is insanely stupid. Like, uh, like Kai, the the pilot man who turns on him, the, in, in the way that she yells out in the bar. Like, remember that uh, Kai openly says, "No, I'll do it for free." Also, I am an opportunist, and she tells him everything, and he betrays them all. It's just the she's... most straightforward shit ever. There's no subtlety at all. Like I said, I was so confused by what Zach was showing me. I just thought it was terrible writing that this I is a character who just... Terrible. Yeah. Not the... Because uh, this... Uh, I know I said it, but like, seriously, this is how it works. In fiction, I just assume the writer's terrible, but in real life, if someone wants to help you a lot in a thing that is very much not beneficial to them, and they're known to do things for money, and they're just helping you out of the goodness of their heart, it means you, they want to fuck you. You need to, yeah, you need to have a conversation. Oh, and we didn't talk about it much, but our lead actress is not very good. No. Oh, she's um, bad. Yeah, I, she's I'd say bad. she's bad. Very, uh, very bland, very dull Steve performance. Steve is doing the best he can with the material that's available. Yeah, um, he's, he's playing a pretty normal guy. Gladiator kind of guy barely film. got a chance to really play a character, um, but he's that's generally kind of been... all the characters, in fact. That's there's... a lot of the characters, for sure. Yeah. Um, virtually... I kind of like the uh, the actor who played the main bad guy. I kind of like... I don't know. Wait, which main? Like the character... The, the Francis, the, the... or...? Yeah, Francis. I mean, he was he was doing what he does, that actor, with a role yeah. like that. What else could he do? That, the that's the best he could do. The character goofy and, and stupid, but, like, the performance was like, yeah, yeah, He seemed to yeah. be getting into it, which is what you need. Yeah. If you're gonna mm -hmm. have a fucking character like that. But that's the problem. Yep. You'd be like, oh, I could buy maybe one of the higher-ups, one of the characters being ridiculously evil and use their position because they're only there for the power and the manipulation of other people. But when you make it the entire faction, it's just like, oh, whatever. It's like, no, we well, didn't. Yeah, There's what... one guy who's nice. <laughs> like, Except we don't oh. see him for most of the film. He's barely Everyone's... there. Nope, gone. Um, and then... He'll be in the extended cut for any geez. But, like, why wouldn't you yeah, take advantage movie. of it? Show different dimensions of evil if you want to do that, you know? The different, like, that you have... Evil be but cunning and They clever. did. Kai is an opportunist. He, probably, he does yeah, things for money. He probably would say that. He'd be like, well, yeah, Francis was more calculating evil, and then you had the soldiers who were just, like, insane psychopaths. <laughs> you could have um, had I did it the, to I where, ran the whole gamut. You could have had it to where the Empire, essentially, the evil Empire sets up the village to be prosperous, but they kind of they kind of lock them in to what they're doing, to be like, okay, yeah, we're going to give you all the grain and everything. You're, we're going to empower you to, to, to make all the grain and sell it to us. But that's what you have to do. You have to sell it to us and only us for this price. And it's a yeah, good like, price. We're buying your loyalty well. and you'd have Modoc yeah, be basically, like... Yeah, basically, mm. yeah. And you have no option. And then, and then the sort of underlying yeah. thing is like, 
you know, but if you refuse, it's going to be really bad for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll destroy um, and it, your town and, it's not, and kill and it's people if be, you say no. I think the thing that would make it particularly scary is if it was, like, dispassionate. It's just like, yeah, we're just going to wipe you out like it's nothing, and everybody will go to sleep. You know, like, kind of like... Yeah, we'll just the, replace the, you with the, new people, and that'll be The perpetuation be of evil is so, like, built into the system that it's like bureaucracy. Like, it's, it's just... Yeah, again, it shouldn't be Darth Vader and, that turns up. It should be randoms that are lower level... And they do the nice nice in front of everybody. Your then they're like, we want to take inspection. you into a private meeting. They go into his room and then they're like, so we, uh, they show him a video of maybe when they've done it before. And they'd be like, this is you if you don't do everything I say. Or maybe mm -hmm. they know that they sold it to the rebels, but they're like, you know what? You're on this we'll middle of nowhere shot. planet. Yeah, you're on this middle of nowhere planet. We haven't been here yet. You need to make money. You sold to the rebels. You know what? We're willing to overlook that. You try and but here's the deal. Here's, here's what's going to gonna happen all. from now on. Yeah, here's what's going to happen from now on. And 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 now that that's how it is for them. And they live okay. Mm. They they'll we'll set you up with an okay life. You'll do fine. But you have to do everything that we say. And, and the thing is, is um, not tolerated. Like in terms of if you have the village be occupied. It seems to me like the way that you would want to do it is that maybe they will accept it at the beginning, but then they keep pushing for a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until eventually the people in the village realize it's like, dude, we're being like robbed of everything that we have. You know, like yeah. that it gradually pushes them over the edge that we're they can tolerate the it. Kind of thing, they can know? take it on the chin for a while, but then it starts to get worse and worse and worse. And then it's like, all right, dude, fuck this. Well, instead, it yeah, one of the soldiers wants to marry my daughter, or one of the, uh, or they, or they're they're lowering the price, like slowly but surely they lower the price. They're being that they mean have to, to one of my with. neighbors, but they're being nice to me. But my neighbor, you know, they're doing bad things to him, um, and maybe I can, you know, like I can ignore it essentially. Like the, just the gradual pushing them over the edge. Instead of as soon as they get there, they kill their leader, and then a bunch of psychos just start like like. There's no subtlety. You know the blood there's, axes? There's no, yeah. What if the blood axes were hiding in that village? That could have been interesting. That could have been interesting. And they didn't even know. Maybe it was a secret that was like, held What if we didn't know village? until gradually yeah. moving forward? Because they're, they're, you know, to treat us like the uh, the invading army there. Like, uh, in terms of, like, yeah, everything seems normal. They seem humble. Farmers. There's nothing really going on here. But gradually as the story goes on, it gets more and more difficult to hide them until they are revealed. And then they shoot all of the like, people here. And then that causes a huge, you know... Well, yeah, imagine the conflict in the village of some people being like, why, why, why couldn't you just be quiet? Why could, why did you have to get involved? Why didn't, why didn't you just leave it be and, and allow us to live peacefully instead of bringing us into it? And then you can have the debates about, you know, when do you need to get involved? What can you, what, when is it necessary to, like, these are just like elements to make it a little bit more interesting, you would think would be explored. But instead, it's like the most surface level story ever. Um, and that's when stuff is even happening. <laughs> like, and I'm totally on board. Like, it would be fun to, if we had a, we were like, we're going to have seven. So let's try and get a different motivation for all of them. One of them wants, um, you know, a particular material that you have access to, or at least you've made a deal to have. One of them obviously just wants money. One of them is very invested in the cause. One of them fucking, you know, had a huge life that involves all kinds of death and destruction and doesn't believe doing in anything Andor, anymore. You know? Yeah, just get we're all these Andor, different kinds the, of people from all these uh, different... The yeah, but no, we can't do that. We just have characters that, like, you know, they have quote-unquote backstories, but they're as bad as one line. And then that's mm -hmm. that. And that's their whole character, the whole fucking movie. And then they don't say anything for the rest of the film. It's like, yeah, but don't worry, we get to watch him fucking tame a griffin. We get to watch the other person kill a giant spider. Isn't this we get amazing to watch and magical? We Look, watch Harry's the learning how up. to play Quidditch. You know, there's, oh there's gotta be a cutscene for the gladiator stuff, right? Do they watch him win a you know, gladiatorial well, yeah, fucking tournament or something. Because, yeah, they just Nothing arrive, get him, planet. and that's it. They just they just show up. He's a drunk loser. They say, fight for us. And he said, no. And they said, no, but really. And he says, yes. And then they leave. And that's it. There's no Isn't gladiator that a lot of fight. Work to put into this. The environment and everything and all of that yeah. art that you have to create for something that well, that's, small. That's why I don't really want to watch it, but I guess I do have some level of curiosity about this extended cut just to see, <laughs> like, what the film oh, is no, supposed I... to be according to Zach, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's and let's, and how different is it really? You know, when we realize again, like that. Just I think it'll be worse. Cut, I yeah, I it'll probably so. be worse because yeah. when it, more of Zach means more time for him to contradict himself. Oh yeah, he'll add more content and context, but all of that content and context will be really bad mm -hmm. and will contradict things that have otherwise been set up. Like we mm -hmm. don't know if, like most of the characters, we don't know if they're bad or not. 
because we don't know anything about they're not them. Anything yet? They're yeah, nothing. they're not characters. They're just sort of people well, so who in, have a few lines, but we the, don't even know if they're good or not. In the promo for Rebel Moon Part Two: The Scar Giver, it shows all of their histories in flashbacks in the trailer. Uh, so I wonder if they're oh going to say that with dialogue over it as they're having a conversation with someone else and just. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point that I believe like she'll be like, "Let us get to know each other." You, what happened to you? Oh man, let let me tell you. That Whoa. Was bad. Ooh, and then man. they just explain the whole thing, and then it's like, wow, that's a really crazy thing. And then another guy goes, oh yeah, you think that's bad? And then he explains his backstory. <laughs> and the next person's like, you think that's oh, bad? Oh, you think that's bad? <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, get that sorted out in a half hour, all the backstory's done. This is character. This is what mean. It's like, Zach, you must have seen movies. Mm. It's funny because a lot of people say Dawn of the Dead is one of his better films. He didn't write it. Yeah, but was, he's uh, he directed Dunn, right? scripts that are considered competent. Did he learn nothing? Um. Well, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because the last, aside from uh, Army of the Dead, the last original thing he did was Sucker Punch, and it's like, well, Sucker Punch was also a bunch of other things like iconography and elements and yeah. and ideas from other films like thrown together um, haplessly into a blender. Yeah, it's the daydream. It's mm. the daydream that he brought to life. But it's not, it's just a bunch of random little, it's a bunch of random thoughts that are just sort of strung together yeah. loosely. Meanwhile, when it's based on something that someone else made, it's like, well, then it starts to gain elements of the coherency of that other work. It just manages to be a part of it, right? <laughs> Which, again, it's just interesting to think about, isn't it? And the conclusion is just unbefucking leaveable levels of opportunities that he's wasted again and again and again. Yep. It's it's just again uh, like what 150 million dollars two movies guaranteed 166 million for the two movies yeah, yeah. so for two movies like basically all the money that you need for whatever you want that's just yeah you, can just you do can, whatever you can ask for more money you couldn't reasonably ask for more money yeah there's no way that if you're that's the kind of money where at that point if you feel like you need more money then you're just being silly. Like what could yep. you what what story could you possibly want to tell that requires more money? The grand space epic opera. Well, the Marvels because it costs more than that. <laughs> the At Marvels that point, I'm like, why aren't you just adult. making an animated movie that has everything? I'm surprised he didn't I make just, a, oh, his yeah. own superheroes. Considering his fan base would have been much more inclined to support his work. Hey, if Cora it just is a well, superhero. That's a really that's the really weird thing about like the sort of the I guess the Snyder fan base as it exists now is it's like it's really Fans of Zack Snyder working on DC characters specifically that it doesn't seem to not translate care about this. nearly as much to other things. It's like, people, they're particularly interested in what Zack Snyder wants to do with Superman and Batman um, and Darkseid and stuff, but like, if it's his original things and nobody's as interested, it's, it's kind of fascinating compared to the way that it typically works where it's like, oh, I'll watch anything that director makes, you know? Whatever, whatever they're doing is interesting to me. You know, like you'd watch any film Tarantino makes, regardless of like where it's set. You know the, what the general objectives are, or you know Flanagan. Um, it's so funny yeah. to compare. It's like Flanagan comes out with literally anything, and we're like, yep, 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 yep. Z Zack Snyder comes out, we're like, oh god, here we go. <laughs> here we go again. Yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, Rebel Boot is quite. It's, it's it's just a Zack Snyder film. It really is through and through. I think it's like, I feel it's a good example of what happens when you basically give him free reign to do whatever he wants. It's like, oh, Rebel Moon is what you get. Terrible. And uh, I genuinely think this is, people are starting to notice, like, that is the case. This is not someone you can rely on for great storytelling. It's, uh, yep. it's over. It's over, that should have been apparent bros. with his many films that he's already made, but um, mm -hmm. if it happens now, then you know that's okay. Because I don't know, I, I'm late tired of seeing his like. That's so crap. What's the thing, my? Uh, if you remember when we did a, try and do the DC arc, I was like, Man of Steel. I think I remember it being like, you know, the stuff in there that works. And then it was like, Holy shit, mm -hmm. this is one and of the worst fucking it. movies I've ever seen. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You rewatch it and you're like, Oh my god. Massacring the children or the baby or the embryos. That was uh oof. Krypton had its chance, all right. It really did, yeah. So we're done Krypton with that. Krypton had its chance.
Well, that's Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Uh, can't wait for part, part two, Child of Fire. where can't it's going to contextualize two, everything and make everything better and not be hyper dumb and cringe with action scenes that everyone hates, no characters, and a world that makes no fucking sense at all, that just feels like it's copied and pasted, bunch of random shit from everybody else. No, it won't be that at all. Yep. It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be really good. This will be the good one, guys. Already got a pretty bad reputation. I think that time is only going to murder this thing because not only do people, will they more and more realize it's bad, nobody's going to talk about it. That's the big thing that's going to hurt it is that nobody's going to have anything to say about it. So It'll it won't be, okay, be an instance yeah. of with time going on, people will be like, you know, it's actually like kind of underrated. It'll, it's kind of the same thing that's probably will happen with the Marvels, which is that it, it's never going to recover. Um, there will never be a point when people go, you know, people were too harsh to it when it came out. I was like, no, no, it was just terrible. And like, Zach was and lucky with Army of the Dead not ruining his reputation, but this seems to be That was because it was coming it. out around the same, it was coming around at the same time as the Snyder Cut, so I feel like that massively that makes overshadowed sense, yeah. it. Whereas in this case, this is just him standing on his own, creating like a, a new original science fiction world. And it was hyped up, and people were like, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to all the trailers, yeah. it looks neat, just like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's too late now. You can see it all. This yep. is it. Mm -hmm. One of the worst movies of the year. It is. It was. It Might was legitimately be. miserable to watch. It sucked, yeah. um, and it was all it was was just a terrible version of movies that we'd seen before. Yeah, we'll. Um, in a blender. This this will be arriving on the uh, Mula channel before the New Year's episode, in which we will do we'll talk about the year in. That's passed, <laughs> and uh, you know what you guys yeah. should totally check out. What you fucking definitely shouldn't like this. <laughs> but hey, uh -uh. if you're curious and you have some kind of substance and friends, I guess you could do that because there's some stuff to really laugh at. But I don't know if it's worth the full runtime. On that note, goodbye, everyone. Yeah, yeah goodbye, see you, everybody. Bye, bye. <laughs> goodbye, toodaloo.